Hey everybody, welcome to another night of Alien RPG. And it's been so, so long since we got to play Alien. The last episode I think was Hope's Last Day and that was like uh, February, I think that happened. And before that was Heart of Darkness. But tonight we're doing the long awaited Building Better Worlds. Um, if anybody's on the fence of this book, do not hesitate. This book is absolute gold and a must have expansion to go with the main rule book for sure. This book gives you the rules to colonize planets, explore space, uh, new planet generators that go in great detail. If you use those plus the ones in the main rule book, uh, it divides the planet into like seven zones uh, and then randomly generates different things for each zone. So you never know what you're getting until you get there. Um, it's like uh, it's just totally amazing and uh i know you, you hear uh some people say uh that uh the alien story gets old once you see the xenomorph how, how could you have a campaign going with the, the xenomorph that gets boring after a while but this game is uh sci-fi horror and uh you could just use the rules for any kind of lore that you want it doesn't have to be alien right uh and plus uh the lore in this book plus the colonial marine book is so expanded so much that it's a whole new universe compared to what they had in the movies and that that it's just dying for uh stories to tell and uh nothing wrong with having a little scary xenomorph coming at you every now and then right so yeah even for you people that are not into alien this is the best sci-fi horror game you could possibly get um but this campaign actually that they have in the book um is designed in like an open sandbox type thing but they give you seven missions that make like a story that continues the story that they've been telling for throughout this whole RPG series. Um, you don't even have to do this story if you don't want to, but uh, uh, here at the channel, we'd like to do what they come up with and the story. So uh, we're going to do the stories in order. They don't have to be played in order, be any order. Uh, just the last mission has to go at the end. But we're going to do... Uh, mission by mission and then we might have a couple side missions throughout the whole thing who knows um but uh so uh this first session um we're gonna do the first mission in the book which is called home sweet home plus they got the introductory mission so it's a long introduction um and that should take maybe three sessions i would guessing um but who knows that might be 10 right <laughs> but i'm guessing three uh, so, um, yeah, and we're going to be doing it bi-weekly uh, because it's easier on the uh, the players, you know, to have it every two weeks. It gives everybody a little break, except me, because i got to do The Walking Dead next week. So, uh, bi-weekly, I'm doing The Walking Dead in this game, and uh, The Walking Dead just came out, new game, just like this. Uh, uh, well, it's plays just like this it's got the stress dice it's got the year zero engine and everything like that uh it depends if you like zombies and stuff an apocalypse game right uh but uh it's an amazing game it's a high role-playing game like so many stories to tell in that thing like last session we're just role-playing forever you can just role-play forever in that game um the zombies the the only thing that's different than alien basically is the the zombie mechanics are kind of different. The fighting's really abstract and different, but good nonetheless. Uh, but they have a mess up dice, like stress dice. Uh, here you roll face hugger, you panic. In that game, you roll like a, a hand, I think it's called, a walker. And uh, something bad happens. A walker could come out of nowhere and give you a walker attack or something, or you could run out of ammo or just something bad happens. And it's uh, really good. If you brought that into Alien, that would make Alien really, really, I think it would improve Alien, actually, if you kind of combine the panic and that mechanic together. Oh, it might be interesting. But anyways, I'm doing... Sorry. Go ahead. No, what? Are you saying you're going to give us, like, what, a horde of face huggers or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time you roll a, a face hugger, a, a xenomorph comes out at you, right? <laughs> I was going to say the earlier xenomorph comment, like, comment, that was just that entirely too overkill. to scare us about new things he has to throw at us. So... Yeah, <laughs> but I shouldn't give them ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't, just stop. <laughs> yeah, just pull your head, put the but shovel like, down. But like I said before, 
like I said before, you guys don't have to commit to the whole campaign because it'd be a long time. You just have to commit uh, for each mission or whatever that you want to play in. And your characters will be part of the whole story. You can come and go at your leisure. Um, so with that, I think we should uh, introduce our characters. And I'm going to do it uh, differently. I, Walking Dead, I figured before I'd, I'd introduce the characters every single episode. And I find that uh, it gets kind of dry after a while because everybody knows the characters. If you're still watching like episode three, you already know the characters, right? So just going to do it episode one. I'm going to introduce the characters. And after that, after the trailer gets right in the action, just like a TV show. You know what I mean? And then all the talking and all that stuff, we'll save that for the end of the time when we do our recap. So um, we're going to start at the right of the screen. And we're going to start with the uh, lethal... Deli meat. So we got a new character class. They got two new character classes in this game. They got the Wildcatter, who's like uh, some sort of like prospector trying to make money, looking for minerals and stuff on new planets and that. And we got the Entertainer, which you could be like bartender and stuff like that. So we got a few uh, players here that picked up on those ones. And uh, Lethal Deli Mint, uh, you picked the Entertainer, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'll be playing Finn O'Connell. Uh, who is an entertainer. Uh, he is a bartender, uh, stoutly built, uh, has a cheap kind of style, but it is somewhat stylish still. Uh, pretty regularly has a grin on his face and uh, pretty much always ready to pour beer for somebody as long as they're willing to pay. All right. And uh, next we have Mike. What are you playing, Mike? So I'm playing the, uh, the new uh, Wildcatter. So I'm playing a, a character named Blair Brimley, uh, just big bearish kind of guy. Um, just really looking out as far as uh, he's a prospector, he's been through a family of prospectors. His whole, uh, you know, dick is basically just toting the company line, making enough money to kind of go out and, you know, find where his ancestors came from. It's kind of like the whole exploring thing, but, you know, he does the prospecting on the side to make some money and just, you know, mine for minerals, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and uh, Athena, what do we have here? Um, hey, yeah, I am also going to be playing an entertainer. Um, my character is um, Halwyn Carrie, uh, Wynn to her friends, not Winnie. Um, and <laughs> she is um, kind of almost like formerly a singer. Um, she has kind of distanced herself a little bit um, from like having that be her primary. Um, career as she's uh, aging and getting older. Um, she's trying to kind of uh, stretch herself a little bit into the more business side of things. Um, and so her little little reason uh, for trying to step out kind of into the, the frontiers a bit um, is to try to get her own business started up um, and kind of be, be running the books uh, more than anything, and take take over that. Not gonna be young and beautiful forever, so. And it's very lonely, stressful, and depressing out there in the lonely depths of space, and that's why uh, they introduced entertainers to the mix to help with that. Kyoti, mm -hmm. uh, what do we got? Yeah, I'm playing uh, Ted Sawchuk. Uh, Ted's, uh, he's a roughneck. He's um, he's just out here to do a job. He um, he kind of specializes in plumbing and waste disposal, uh, but he used to be a bouncer. So his friends say that he still just takes out the trash. Um, <laughs> he's uh, a yeah, big guy. Doesn't does his job. Kind of no nonsense. Uh, likes his job, but most days he'd rather be fishing. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You better hope you find a lake out there in the depths of space. <laughs> I feel like if there's a lake, it probably has some untold horror that's just going to murder us all, though. Yeah. That's the xenomorph alternative yeah. that he hinted at. Maybe some, I'm calling yeah. it right now. Some face wigglers. If that can be the first to catch it, you'll be happy. Yeah. Face wigglers. Right. Shop teeth. <laughs> Deadliest catch. <laughs> oh, deadly. All right. Sure. Here we have the great white xenomorph shark. <laughs> I'll pull my Cleo accent out. It's actually a pretty solid accent. <laughs> Have you seen that Tom Cardi video where he like watches the entire like Jurassic Park trilogy and then like does a does a song about it? 
and he goes like four more movies and just like makes up bullshit plots. No, but that's <laughs> there's, not okay. No. There's you should make also those the links in the chat later, but there's a fantastic line that I think about so often where it's like one of the ones he gets into is like they make robot dinosaurs and then there's like they send the dinosaurs to space and then they're like robot plot. dinosaurs and the normal dinosaurs start breeding. Still a better plot. <laughs> it's the great more. white shark xenomorph. I was like the robot space dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> He just blew yeah. Omega's plan for the event. I know. It's been a that case oh. wide Great white shark xenomorph. Oh, that's that's yeah. really good. So that's something. It's, it's been <laughs> As Omega just starts scribbling down, like, oh yeah, what else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there was the uh, there was the giant alligator xenomorph from like the Batman X, the DCX um, oh, alien yeah. comics back in the nineties. It was oh, pretty cool. <laughs> okay. And they did those ones that swam in uh, Resurrection too. They had those. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Those things were awesome. Well, let's uh let's do uh Epsilon now. Epsilon uh this is something different. If you ever played the last uh thing that the uh, Free League came up with was Heart of Darkness. And that story is incorporated to this whole ranger of things too. And uh they introduced a lot of different things in that thing, new aliens like the perfected and all that stuff. And uh if you watch that, like, I think like 3,000, 3,500 people watched the first episode and they really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, as they, it's 10 episodes long. So as they go through that, you get less and less people committing to the whole thing. Right. Understandably, it happens for everyone. But only like a few hundred people watched the very last episode. And that very last episode is dynamite role playing everything. Just the dice, how it worked out. Everybody's running. The ship's breaking down. They're fighting the perfected. Uh, Epsilon's character gets shot and her, Athena shot me. Yeah, by her own. We don't need to point fingers. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. We're, we're first of all, we don't need to point finger. You, and you did this to me. Her character, Seja, uh, a UPP, a secret UPP. They didn't know she was UPP in the story. And the cat was the only one to survive that, to get off on an escape pod and leave while the whole space station just exploded into the black hole um yeah i would watch that 100 percent. but the point i'm trying to make is that why not I'm trying to figure why not bring her character continue that character she's still alive in the universe and says or epsilon's playing it so epsilon's playing uh what's your last name again <laughs> Dravakovsky. yeah seja oh, Dravakovsky. and yeah enter say tell us a little bit something about her there epsilon so, hello, I am your friendly neighborhood Epsilon, playing your friendly neighborhood scientist, uh, Sezia Drabakovsky. Um, she is, uh, originally Ukrainian of, of the UPP, uh, and she survived, was the sole, as Omega said, the sole survivor of the absolute ordeal that was Heart of Darkness. Like, these horrifying aliens that psychically bitch slapped her when she sassed them too much and like turned somebody she thought was a friend into like a weird religious zealot that shot her um not my fault she was a non-believer <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll talk this out later and, and we'll we'll talk this out later but um yeah she was she lost her right eye in that whole ordeal so nowadays says Sez, um She's still more of the quiet type, a little bit more reserved, but very much keeps her posture straight. She's and put together and, you know, she's got a new eye. It's a slightly different color than the other ones. And there's just a little bit of like residual scarring. And every now and again, when you look at her, you just kind of see this haunted look in her eyes as if she's caught up in the memory of something absolutely horrible. Yeah. And, well, the Perfected, like, supposedly what the crew of Heart of Darkness did was stop the Perfected from spreading, but at the back of her mind, there is almost no way that there, that all traces of the Perfected are gone, and that can't be allowed to to stand. 
So, I am going to be out, Sesha is going to be out there making sure that those terrible things don't hurt anybody else. And uh, your cat? What about your cat? And I have a cat. I took the cat <laughs> with me. The cat survived. His name is Adrian. He is the bestest cat. Adrian the cat. It's such a good name for a cat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the cat literally has like the ability to purr and calm people down or something like that. I read the Heart of Darkness like book. Like de-stress, yeah. 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 So. yeah. The purring helps you. Yeah. Ate a squid baby uh, <laughs> xenomorph thing. Um, this cat is metal as fuck. Um, and he's basically, you know, my emotional support kitten. I was gonna say, she has him instead of therapy, so... Yeah, so she, the cat she got the cat instead of therapy. She got the cat and a slightly off-colored eye. Well, and, uh... Yeah, so, and I w we would say that, uh... Seja's been pretty quiet about the Perfected and all the aliens, uh, keeping it to herself. All the yeah, other characters know nothing about this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I guess in the campaign, nobody's supposed to know nothing about this, but <laughs> I brought somebody that does. And, uh, so yeah, that plays out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you got story points, so. I do. Yeah, you got three story points. So that's good, too. She's definitely not going to lose it with her eye. Yeah, you got Wait, lots of chances on. now to not die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to immediately forget about them like an hour in. <laughs> yeah. Inevitable. Okay. Well, I think uh, we're about ready to begin. Let's enter the game. Ooh. I was about to say, the heart of darkness. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it again. I can't go back. <laughs> I can't go back. I can't do this again. <laughs> By the 2050s, the unfettered growth of the mega corporations meant that private equity led the way to the stars. The British Wayland Corporation established settlements in what became known as the Far Spinward Colonies. They brought with them under the control of the newly formed Three World Empire. But while Wayland and the Three World Empire were the same primary movers behind this expansion, the colonists themselves came from all walks of life, including the Chinese Asian Nations Cooperative, the CANC, a supernation subsequently absorbed by the UPP. All told, 18 colonies were established, inhabited by millions of hopeful pioneers. Then, 75 years ago, disaster. The space between the outer rim and the far spinward colonies was scoured by massive solar ejections, gamma bursts, and waves of radiation. The time known as the isolation had come. Travel was made impossible and all communication with the new colonies was lost. Cut off from Middle Heaven, the far Spinworld colonies were left to fend for themselves and forgotten. In 2180, the United Nations proposed that a multinational, multi-corporation expedition should travel to learn the fate of the far Spinworld colonies and reconnect them to the Middle Heavens recession and the recollection of the abundance of the old colonies made this a mouth-watering prospect to the UA and the Third World Empires and UPP alike. The Great Mother Mission was established by the United Nations Interstellar Settlement Corps, the UNISC, under the command of UN Bureaucrat Governor Abantu. Naturally, the Interstellar Commerce Commission, the ICC, were to be well represented to ensure fair play and all safety protocols were stringently followed. A, col a colossal colony ship, the UNCSS Yanya, was launched in 2182 with its four 
Magellan class support ships, the UNSCS um, CDC, the UNCSS Sovaliski Island, the UNCSS Chimdata, the UNCSS Typhoon. With the addition of three Thrope Rescue and Recover Covers class Savage vessels, the flotilla was ready to sail. The mission parameters are as follows. One, establish contact with the far spinward colonies and provide immediate humanitarian support as necessary. Two, survey the sector and establish new UN administered colonies. Three, recover existing colonial records for each. And in the journal, you have your contract there if you want to read in detail all what you're required to do and your pay. Now, what's the story, Mother? 102 weeks and five days later, and thousands of Wayland Utani dollars. Thanked already? This is the way to make a living, isn't it? Well, you think that until hypersickness kicks in and for the next 20 minutes you wish you were dead. An hour later, you're ready for the post-arrival briefing and the rest of the crew file quietly through the airlock where you eventually take the seat in a spacious meeting hall alongside your fellow pioneers. The room is buzzing with conversation, 100 voices all talking about the same thing. Have we arrived? What's the news from home? This coffee's still shit, you hear scattered in the distance. Then uh, Governor Abantu stands at the front and calls for quiet. Quiet, everybody, quiet. First, the good news. We have all arrived on the fringes of the far spinward colonies without a hitch. Home is now more than 30 parsecs behind us. That's 100 light years or a little bit more. But talking of home, there is bad news. The United Americas and the Union of Progressive Peoples are at war. Fighting has broken out across the frontier and hostilities are ongoing. Furthermore, the world of New Albion has broken away from the Third World Empire, and while there are no hostilities yet, some fear it may come to blows. But political stupidities of our government do not change the situation here. We are United Nations. We are United Nations Expedition and have a mission to fulfill for the good. So leave your petty political rivalries back in middle heavens. And talking of bad news, we have not picked up any signals as we have hoped we might. What this says about the fate of the people out there, we don't know until we explore. But as a precaution for now, we will keep two of our SEVs and send only two, the Typhoon and the Solovitsky Island to reconnect with the colonies. Good luck, everyone. And please be careful out there. There's a moment of silence. And then pandemonium breaks out right before your eyes. Everybody starts yelling and screaming and shout different sides. The UPP people are yelling at the United Americans people and vice versa. And then you hear Valentina, this woman you've known before, she stands up out of her chair, leaps to her feet at this UPP general, Neuron. We can never trust the UPP, you bastards! Neuron pulls himself up and stands at his impressive height, tense but restrains. Others start to shout, 
Governor Bantu waves his arms in a futile attempt to restore peace. Stop! Stop! Quiet! Quiet! And you guys just sit there watching this. You guys want to do anything or are you just going to let it play out? Doesn't seem like it'd do much of my problem. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a horse in this race. Dravikovsky is looking at the ground, practically just pressed against the back wall of the room near the door. Are we all like, sitting like the same table? Or are we like... I think this is just like a general like room. We're just all kind of like, yeah. Yeah, like milling about. Yeah, you're pressed against the wall next to the door like trying to decide if she should book it or not um finn uh leans over uh to win and just goes oh you think we could start taking odds on who takes the first swing <laughs> oh i know what your money's good for hon and uh but... go ahead sorry athena i didn't mean to interrupt right but, uh, she looks like she's about to start throwing punches. <laughs> yes, uh, hey, <laughs> audience, sorry, audience, uh, each player has given a random roll on a chart of what is, uh, nationality they're affiliated with. Some are UPP, some are Third World Empire, some are different corporations, so each player is different. So, the politics can create uh rivalries within the party itself that's what they're trying to do hey throw a punch at that dirty gummy well this should be interesting yeah, if it ain't in the shit you can stir it up well i i, uh, I like to sit back and watch I lean around. I didn't want to take odds, though. I, uh, mm -hmm. I got 10 pounds down on, uh, she throws the first punch. You know, I like the mods. <laughs> <laughs> you watch this. Punch him already. You watch this <laughs> unfold for a bit. And, uh, you're getting kind of like, what's going on here? This is how we're going to do a mission with all this chaos going on. But then, uh, an android approaches you and uh he starts speaking to you in uh a stern tone like quite as quite a display wouldn't you say my name is gaius pleasure to meet you i'm not convinced that these missions shouldn't be android only if you ask me and then he hands you a data disc your assignments i see little point in delaying your departure any further I'll brief you in detail when you arrive. Are we going to have anything to come back to? I should hope so. Uh, I'm sure the governor will find a way to uh, calm everything down. Yeah, he's done a real convincing job so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm uh, hopefully this blows over and they realize we're all in the same boat. Exactly. Seems As like a as I hear the concerns uh, that the people around me uh, are expressing, I kind of think to myself about how um, while chaos can be profitable, uh, destruction is not. Uh, so I, I try to eyeball the nearest uh, a fellow three worlders and uh, just start going, Oi, tell them to shut the fuck up. Oh, we don't want to come back to nothing. Uh a person from yeah, a person from Albion uh, yells out at you. You're a bunch of corrupt bastards, taking control of our country, trying to take all our money, pay us nothing. Oh, it's all rebuff. It's a fair game out here, ain't it? Yeah, you and all that glory, wear your suit and tie, and serve drinks, get us drunk, keep us quiet. Oh, We're oh. not. We don't fall for that crap anymore. It's a noble profession you're slandering. Uh, Why I oughta? Chaos <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, says, I think we better go. You guys, these guys 
are going to be staying here anyways. We, we should get on with our mission. We're one of the two ships that are leaving. And he takes you and uh, heads, heads you off to your ship. And as uh, you leave and exit the room, the, thank God the sound of screaming subsides. Dramakovsky is the first one out of that room. You get to the airlock. And you notice you have a crew of people that will be on your ship. Oh, oh huh? Okay. Yes. First to greet you is uh, security officer Hamada. Welcome. Everything is secure and uh, ready to go. Much obliged. Uh, the mechanic Dabber, he nods to uh, Seja. As uh, the pilot, uh, Dudge, his nickname's Dudge, his last name's Dun Dungeon. He nods to you all and gives us Seja a wink. She looks away. Uh, Emily uh, looks at, uh, where's the names here? Like her already. I know a fellow prospector when I see one. <laughs> Tip my hat. Think you just yeah. like her hat? Yeah, she looks at Blair and fancy good hat. There's money to be made out there, don't you think? Certainly is. And uh Counselor Lakota, let me be of service to you for your psychological and medical needs. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> is he an android? I have flashbacks. No. It's, it's, an no, it's hard darkness all over again. <laughs> no, genuinely, our, our, the alarm bells in Seja are already going off if they weren't already. <laughs> like, if the, <laughs> Doc, it's the doctor again. Girl's tense. Girl's <laughs> tense. <laughs> okay. Well, it's all right. The only you. counselor we'll need is a pint. That was work for me. You can say yeah, that again. Your sorrows, um. Exactly. You can find it at uh, uh, fin Finn's Pint Shop. Name's in progress still. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I need some work. <laughs> it's a workshop. Flag on the reef? Finn's Flag on the reef, perhaps? <laughs> I was thinking the space sip. <laughs> oh. And, uh, uh, you know. Finally, Inspector Tan Blatchman. Greet you. Hi, I'll be, uh, I'm the ICC inspector. I'm here to make sure everything is on, it's going as planned, um, that you are not stealing any, uh, fines and hiding it from, uh, the mission directives. Oh, bloody narc. You are to obey the rules, and I'm here to make sure you follow the rules. Any questions? Certainly none. Oh, not one. That's good. Any, anybody want to talk or anything to any of them? Or are you good? I don't know. I feel like Sis is already just. She's a very tense person. She's. She, yeah. <laughs> She said uh, maybe two words to anybody total since you've seen her. <laughs> yeah, I think Wynn kind of sidles up to her and is like, You're right, honey, you seem a, a, a bit high strong. The conflict is. I don't appreciate it. Yeah. Certainly not. I doubt anyone does. I'm sorry about those people arguing. It does no good. To know that when shit hits the planet, the I, alphabet won't matter. I do approve with Albion leaving the third oh, world empire. Off with that one. I know many people don't, but those people on New Albion were just being smothered by the third world empire. But politics ain't really a good thing. It just makes people angry. Hey, uh... 
kind of like nervously looks over at uh, Finn. I was like, I would uh, also appreciate that if you were uh, not so flippant with uh, what you say about n- certain nations. I am. Apologies. <laughs> hey, no offense, meant, lass. Ah, I just get a little fire in my blood. I ah, just need a pint to calm down, but I understand you. You know what they say about us three worlders? Number one creator of Independence Days across the stars. <laughs> I see. That and some other things, yeah. Less what complimentary. Other, what other things? Some new crazy new STD or something? Oh, shit. Well, that would be creative, wouldn't it? Well, that sounded like what you were implying. Something, uh, less than savory. Reminds me of a joke I'll tell later. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'd like to hear it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something to look forward to. Well, Counselor Lakota... I know basically Cody and I are playing the same character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've got two Everybody. Southerner... You've got three <laughs> Southerners, the Irishman, and the very nervous... Ukrainian in the corner. It's gonna work out really well. Yep. <laughs> it just doesn't want to be called a space communist. <laughs> well, you know. Except, except she is a space communist. <laughs> <laughs> I probably hey, almost died play. over it. Uh, out of curiosity, um, I think it's been a minute, so I'm trying to try to remember. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong if I can't roll for this, but, uh, as we're kind of settling in, I, I do want to get an eye on uh, Inspector Tan here and see if he's on the level or if he seems like the kind of inspector that's willing to take a bribe despite having all uh, high and mighty narc? about stuff. Yeah, is he a real hey. narc or is he... he just Are you cool, Tan? Good? Are you cool? Yeah. <laughs> so you want to make like a <laughs> observation <laughs> roll? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Observation. Narc detection. That needs no. to be a talent. Narc detection. Succeeds. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you you realize that uh, Inspector Tan is pretty young, naive, and like a rookie cop. He's straight by the book. Gotcha. That's a narc. <laughs> All right. So don't be filling up your pockets with no uh, minerals. Oh, I can just slip out of my accident. There's nothing I can do. Potentially, yeah. I fell into the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think Wynn does go over to Inspector Tan as as. Um, Ben's kind of given him like a, a, a look over, and she's like, "So how you you been on many missions, or have much experience out out in the field? Any anything?" Well, yes, actually, if you must know, I have been on many missions. I'm very experienced, and that's why the uh, the ICC put me in charge of this of inspecting this mission because. I am very experienced and knowledgeable and very good at problem solving. And kind of get us. Sounds like he ain't got no experience. I was going to say, that's a real resume (laughs) job that you kind of answer. I don't think Sasha would say this, but she's thinking it. But like, if you have to say how good you are at at, at your job that much, are you really that good at your job? That's pretty much what Blair says. He's just kind of like, that just sounds like he ain't got no experience. (laughs) Are they all simulations? Damn. <laughs> just do as you're told. Do play by the rules, and we will get along just fine. I could be a really good friend, you know. I play uh, crazy eights. You know, we could play after uh-huh. at night time. Oh, it sounds just crack, all right. Yeah. Do you fish? <laughs> I think he only goes. So matter of fact, do you fish? Fishing, fishing. Judge a man by the way he fishes. Why do you fish? Why do you torment another animal for pleasure? <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be a long trip. <laughs> and he's just a vegan. Leave him alone. <laughs> he's a space vegan. Space vegan. <laughs> you have to put space in front of it. It's a rule. I see our space vegans. I'm. Mm-hmm. We're. This is. This is my head. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> That's my <laughs> channel <laughs> merch. Vegan. The ICC are space vegans. Next, we're gonna see hear about uh, how he's run a marathon. <laughs> Well, actually, Inspector Tan, have you ever run a marathon? Uh, no, I have not. There's little time to, for such frivolous things. Well, you run a marathon fair. in... Zero-G? 
Yes. <laughs> I think point. It's I'm not very sure. technical anymore. I, I do have extensive uh, zero G training, but I can't imagine even that. <laughs> well, so I could see you guys uh, got a thing for Inspector Tan and Counselor Lakota. Yeah, that's <laughs> just very, ner very like she will not look this at this. She's not looking at this man. She's like pretending he is not there, actively pretending he is not there. And he goes, well, shall we go now? Shall we get ready? Let's get at her. Yeah, do it. I mean, if Diver, you if you need me for anything, I'm here. And you enter your ship and you close the airlock. You spend a few days uh, making sure all the systems are functional. Uh, then you head into cryo sleep as you go to your mission. Oh, off to this again. Which is to KOI 26500.1. And it's about a two week cryo sleep. You enter cryo sleep. And uh, two weeks later, you awaken and gather in the briefing room. I assume Davor uh, is UPP, yes? Davor. Based on his name, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that... He winked at you. Like, yeah. No, the <laughs> other guy, Dutch was the guy that winked at me. He just kind of oh. like gave me an acknowledgement. The other guy winked at me and said, oh, she was man. like, I do not see it. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe you're just cute. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Sesha would be. But she's also like the kind of like don't please do not perceive me type. <laughs> Pilot Dudge is giving me a lot of Gary Oldman vibes. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been sitting here like he looks like someone. Yep. He looks like uh, Gary Oldman, and Inspector Tan reminds me of. Um, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda for some reason. Yeah, like, the shape of the beard. Very yes. briefly, yeah. like no, that yeah. is Lin. For a second, from a distance, I was thinking Grant Imahara. Was that his name? Of oh, Lin from uh, Mythbusters. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. zoomed out. But then when you mouse over him, yeah, that's that's just Lin Manuel mm -hmm. Miranda. Like uh, Council yeah. Dakota is uh, um, Angelina Jolie. Okay. Hmm? The dopest yeah. goatee ever. I thought I thought Dudge kind of looked like an old Conan. He does. Oh, it's true too. Yeah. I, can see it. oh, I think it's the way the hair is kind of. Yeah. And the like oh, face. Yeah. I was thinking barbarian. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. No, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> the age of Hyperborea. Yeah. The crawl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Conan kind of looks like Nor. I see. I do see mm. the the old Conan now too. See, I was also having Nora flashbacks. And mechanic Davor kind of looks like, um, like a cross between Walter White and the other guy on Mythbusters. Not Adam Savage, but the other guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking that French actor who was uh, Leon the Professional. What's his name? Oh, um, oh my God. Uh, 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 Gene or no? Gene, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that's the kind of vibe I get from him. We're already, yeah. like, celebrity faceplate with these guys. <laughs> yeah. Nor fans, of course. There's, and we're not going to remember their real names. We're just going to remember, like, oh, Seth. Carry on, no. Yeah. Conan O'Brien, where are you? And Where's that professional guy? Beard. <laughs> uh, beard Jolie. Miranda. Where's Beard Jolie? Lin-Manuel Miranda. Lin -Manuel that's Miranda. way longer than just saying oh. Inspector Tan. It's Zora yeah. from Epithet Erased. Oh, my. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Weeks later, you arrive at your destination and you gather in the briefing room with coffee. You're looking over the beautiful planet just outside the window that you arrived at. Oh, she looks like a giant peach. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Prospector Emily says, a peach with many riches deep inside. Wouldn't that just be the peach pit? It's getting a little warm in here. Oh. <laughs> 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 Say you're breaking the immersion. Wouldn't that just be a peach pit? I wouldn't call that riches. Well, you all of a sudden uh, it starts beeping on the console oh. and you get a video message. You're receiving a video call from Gaz, the android you've seen back on uh, the Yanya. Gaius! Oh, jeez, what's going on there? A Roman named boy. <laughs> uh, Gorum Colony, K O I 26500.1, is a mining colony established in 2067. Terraformed, our records show the planet is rich in pentalite iron ore, and some trace elements. The population in 2100 was noted as 1 million. Founded by J.V. Gorham, the site of the deepest drilling is apparently at 23 kilometers. When they, were, they were introducing non-indigenous life to help with mining operations. Earth's standard gravity orbits a red giant star with diurnal length of 36 hours. Arid with high winds and frequent sandstorms. That's all I have for you. As you know, our mission is first and foremost exploratory and humanitarian. Um, see what's there, and if anyone needs immediate assistance, then establish contact with any political authority and negotiate the return to the United Nations. Oh. If there's no one there, assess the planet for immediate recolonization, and don't forget to recover the colony's long data disks so we can analyze their history. You will need to file a colony potential report. I'm expecting your assessment of future mining potential, scientific research opportunities, and local life that's worth investigating. And of course, any ad hoc opportunities for scientific, commercial, or financial benefit. You will report your findings back to me. Hail and fail well. Non-native life forms for mining. What did they get? A bunch of moles? Oh, yeah. that's a thought, isn't it? Um, Tell you right now, moles ain't gonna do it. Can you I've imagine had. a mole digging twenty six kilometers? I it's a big, it's a big mole. It's a big I, mole. I, I was gonna say Energizer Bunny of a of a digger, I suppose. Well, you get you get multiple moles. You see, right, okay. you get <laughs> work yeah, shit. You seem to thought a lot about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am. Uh, I, I told you I tried. All right, okay. just let I, you know. I, it's hard. No, our work like, crowding yeah. the moles together. To like herding cats, I'm sure. Like Very similar. Moles, more like. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> Could be like, mules or beasts of burden as well. Mm. No, mole. Mm. No, 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 it's moles. <laughs> no, it it has to be mole. <laughs> can't tell, you can't tell you me. They just hate the moles, moles large moles. enough uh, to but also yeah. be beasts of burden. It's gonna be giraffes. It's gonna be like those are funny looking moles. And if you get the mole of moles, it's <laughs> damn get, funny mole. If, if you get the mole no. of moles, would that be like? I, I think that would be problematic. Actually, I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know. I don't even remember. I know a mole of sand is like a, a, a like a met a metric fuck ton of sand. Yeah. Oh, we're talking. Oh, no. We're talking. Oh. Uh, man, that's a... Mm. That's uh, a mole is a unit <laughs> of uh, a measurement. Uh, oh, Wait, what? Scientific terms. There's a million people down there. They call this a planet K O I two something. Cool. They had to have a name for it. There's a million people down there. A million. Uh, they another name for it. Besides Peach. Dever says a million people down <laughs> there a hundred years ago. It. I wonder what they got now. Maybe yeah. there's like 100 million down there. Could be. Or much less. Could also be much less than that. Can we have Mother scan? Yeah, probably be a good first step. Just see how many people are down there. <laughs> uh, yeah, roll a contact. I have zero, so. I have. Um, I was going to say she'd be all right for contact. I'm not. I'm passable, mostly for audio equipment, though. Anybody with a contact? Yeah. 
Oh, that's, that's a lot of contact. Still Holy contact, my bad. Yeah. I have a wits of five. Holy contact, my bad. Wow. Holy contact is my new favorite sentence. <laughs> Holy <y'all> contact. <laughs> Yeah, I could tell it's going to be a tough one to give you some challenges. I'm going to have to up the stakes here. It's, it's, no, it's crazy here on that. Uh, no, what you need to do is injure one of us. That one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. Okay. Are you volunteering? No. <laughs> you know what it's it's like. No, I got my you not by you, Athena. I lost Lose your arm. I lost, I lost all the names on Twitch. Like, all our names are not on there. So it's stream. It's a bug in Streamlabs. It just doesn't matter what I do. Oh, our no. names are not there, so that's it's okay. At least everything else is working. We just nobody knows our names. People of mystery. <laughs> but uh, you don't know who we are. We don't either. We're still figuring yeah, out. Yeah, Streamlab bugs there. like that. <laughs> and uh, so, Inspector, yes. Uh, well, I got to get to your role. You uh, you're scanning the planet, and there's very frequent storms scattered all over the planet and there's like pockets where you can kind of scan and you kind of pick up like uh remnants of uh society maybe uh you're not sure because it's so fuzzy but you do pick up a derelict ship that's right near you actually and it's just float around yeah Is there supposed to be anyone out here? It's derelict. Whatever it was, it's perhaps been trapped in orbit for who knows how long. The the surface is rather difficult to scan. It appears to be storming at the moment. Maybe this surface was too hostile. The ship uh, the ship is in a, a high orbit and it has no power or heat signature. way to tell uh, the designation of the ship from here. That's what I was going to ask. Is there, in fact, a way to tell that? Well, you got an extra success. With my holy comtech. Yeah. Holy comtech. <laughs> and, uh... Like serial numbers, right? So it, like, ping off or, like, radio signatures. And you go, you, you go, you put it on the, the view screen. Yeah, you really. That's the, you got your on. the ship doesn't on fit ship. any ship in your database. It's not too large. It's a, it's a small class uh, vessel. No, oh. it's not a big boy. It's it look damaged. It's got two decks. You uh, notice there's no air, and the airlocks have been blown out of it. Leave well enough alone. Inspector Tan says, Aren't we here to investigate? Maybe there's some uh, precious things inside that vessel. It's been a hundred right. years. I can remember in cryosleep, we need to be able to survive that. Is the I... power's out? Precious, you say. <laughs> Does that mean the power is out in the entire ship, though? Yes. Well, that's a good question. It does mean there are some unclaimed items, of course. Yeah, if this, uh, this thing goes by, it might be hard to get find again. It's got no power. Well, it's been stuck in orbit for how many years? Yeah. We have been, <clears throat> we have been tasked with finding the, uh, the data. Perhaps, perhaps this ship will have some sort of uh, black box or whatever. I could pull it. That's, uh, kind of what I do. Oh, excellent. Or it's not my specialty. I... Astrophysicist by trade, but, uh, my skill with the keyboard is, uh... There. It has come in handy. Well, we're far away from much. This thing, this thing could have some stuff that could help us if we need any repairs. I'm sure it's got some supplies. 
strip it down for parts if we need it. Are we stuck up or whatever we got to do? Or what we got to do? Yeah, Inspector Tan's like, yes, I agree. I know you, you people are anxious to get down on that planet's surface, but uh, patience, patience, one thing at a time. I think the the rules state that if we find any kind of new derelict ship, that we must investigate. And I think um, it's. You Sorry. guys are new to the crew. Oh, uh, how about the five of you um, go to the ship and see what's there? Hi, it sounds like a right peach idea. Yeah, getting a little hungry here with them peaches. Oh. Peaches, 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 peaches. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, of course, you don't have to. You're free to do it. It's not a railroad. You're free to do whatever you want. You could punch Tan in the face and. <laughs> Say, I'm not going on that ship. <laughs> All right, new plan. Punch him in the face, take over the ship. Here's the thing. Yeah, step one. Punch All right, everyone we'll gather up. New step plan. Basically in a, we're basically in a horror movie, so we have to do the abjectly illogical thing here and the thing that's absolutely going to have something that's going to kill the shit out of us, and that means we go to the ship. But right. you have to have that one person who's like, this is not a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it goes along like... with it anyway. <laughs> Yeah. I Honestly, I feel like final group yeah. psychology and action, everybody. Yeah, who's going to survive at the end of this? They're the ones that have to say we can't go. <laughs> mm -hmm. The cat. Oh, it's the a cat. Idea. The cat's like, meow. Oh, okay, well, the cat's going to go. I do have yeah. the cat. I am holding the cat. This it just gives us that look that it's got in the picture. It's like, no, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> I am holding Yeah, the I think we should go. I think we should check this thing out. No, you don't know what we'll find. Could be anything on there. Could be a whole lot of nothing. Certainly but it's our nothing. nothing. A okay. whole lot of nothing would be preferable to a whole lot of something. That is dangerous. A whole lot of dangerous something. Yeah. A I'm dangerous thing could be there. All the airlocks are blown. Well, so you guys Our decide to go then, point. right? Yes. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm down, yeah. <laughs> what dangerous yeah. thing could be there when all the airlocks are blown? Seisha, <laughs> war flashbacks. <laughs> okay. Why is she? Why is she all curled up in the corner like that? <laughs> why? Why is she crying? Picks up the cat and starts petting the it's cat. Like we call me uh, Constitution. Yeah, oh, okay, so say, uh, Lakota, could you could you do something about her? I have my cat. My cat is all of the therapy I will ever need. Does the cat have a spacesuit? Can the cat have a spacesuit? <laughs> no, you're not going to risk endangering uh, your cat. I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not endangering him just for the sake of it being cute and also just in case something happens on the ship. I'm not taking the cat with me. I just like the idea of a cat in a little spacesuit. Well, maybe you could oh, use that as a project one day. I'll add that right. to Sesha's to-do list. Make a cat-sized space suit. I could, no, it'll just be like a little, like, like space-proof kitty carrier. Yeah. <gasps> yes! I can help, I can help make that. Yeah. There you go. Cat carrier. I was going to say a cat backpack, but capable of sustaining, like, the void of space. <laughs> yeah, it's with yeah. a little bubble in it. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's really I, good. I will pet the cat and I will put him down and let him wander off to whoever he will hang out with while we're gone. It instantly knocks over the nearest coffee cup, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> right. Naturally. All right, let's get on this bucket then. This is great exploration. This isn't alien great for exploration? Like, what's out there? You don't know what's on the planet, what's on the ship? Yeah. We're, I love exploration. I, we're, just, so we're all just driven by money. <laughs> yeah. my money, eh? Sis is not I, driven I, by I, money. She's driven by abject terror. Okay, so you all go into the airlock. You put on your compression suits. And uh, you open the airlock. And we all died. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. We're so gonna have a good time. We're so gonna have a good time. 
It's good. Everybody good. We're not gonna die. Epsilon. Songs with people. Epsilon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to change Song the scale of the map. I sing oh, well. into Doesn't matter. Here, that I feel inside my soul right now. Yeah, and how's that move. working out for you? Uh, that that's Epsilon. Says so just not singing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that working for Epsilon though? Um, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like the song, so you can keep singing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm here for him. <laughs> Random song bullshit. Now, you guys uh, can. You guys just gonna like use your space suits to try to like fly there? Do we have, like, or a, do you want? You got like a harpoon a gun. Huh? You got a yeah. harpoon gun. If you want to try oh. and uh, launch it. Yeah, that would be preferable. <laughs> well, so this, do we not have <laughs> like a docking like... umbilical or something? Right. I, I have a pretty, pretty, no. well, I have, I have no, an okay it, rate on it. You you, you want to go space fishing? Is what I'm hearing. Yes. <laughs> Good thing that's a special. I don't have two Texans with us. They'll kill anything. So, uh, the harpoon would be like a uh, range combat. If anybody has good range combat. Mm. No. Um, I have oh, one, I but my agility is a five. So. There that's probably better than mine. I have one, and my agility is a. That's better than I could do. Really? So, you got right. nobody who could shoot. <laughs> that, I mean, All right, yeah, I got yeah. yeah. I've got two Kim. agility and zero range combat. Ooh. Kim and me is the coming down. People. But you can pour a drink. <laughs> I can pour the finest Guinness. That's, that's, that's short range combat. <laughs> Guinness specifically. It's just Guinness. <laughs> Perfect Guinness pour. in that. Now, if someone needs to punch this ship, I'm, I'm your man, but I can't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me see. Let me see what we can do. Please punch the ship. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You see the arrow harpoon sail across the space and poof, hits the hull right by the airlock. It's secure. You secure it to uh, your own airlock, and it's nice and firm. So now you got a line to cross. See what had happened was when the when the moles went all went out you know to uh, revolt and stuff. I had to go out there and like you know pop them all, shoot them stuff. It was real tough, and that's how I got good at shooting. He killed Fred, of course. The mole rebellion. The, mole, the great mole rebellion. The great mole rebellion. Right. Twenty-one thirty-three. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you, so you had heard about it, huh? Oh, I I had a, I had family that was greatly uh, impacted by. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That was that was yeah. kind of my fault. I think I was off world for that. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a Yankee joke. No, no, no joke here, sir. <laughs> uh, I kind of wish it was though. <laughs> many, many good men were dead, lost their lives that day. <laughs> Learned that the worst thing I have ever seen was a mole rebellion. <laughs> it was a bit of a pyrrhic victory in the end. It really was. <laughs> Still worked out better whole, than the war, though. I oh, so a whole said... like five page essay on the mole rebellion. <laughs> yeah. Did a whole college <laughs> dissertation on it. Uh, in that scene from uh, Ants way back when, between the termites and the ants, that's all I need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a traumatizing scene put on children. I love it. I bet I repressed and... that because I don't remember it. And, uh,. So you start to go across, right? Who's gonna yeah. lead the yeah. way? Who's gonna lead the way? Put yourself in marching order. One, uh, one straight, I'll go, I'll go one straight line. Okay. I'll go I'll first. Go. If there's any problem with the door, we have to like. Oh. Then you have to like, it open. Yeah. Um, I have well, some muscles. It. Just move your tokens. Like put the first guy here. I will go second. I, I bravely uh, volunteer for second. <laughs> I'll go third. I guess I'm last by process <laughs> of elimination. But it doesn't yeah, matter like too enough. much, but you never know what the dice might say. Uh, I'm giving everybody you're walking across. You see this planet below you. It's like you could fall onto the planet, but you're not because you're traveling across the top of the planet at such a speed that you're not falling down it. And you're looking at it and looking at this thing. It's been a while since you ever had a spacewalk and you're all very terrified because uh, you're all kind of like noobs. Uh, but Seja, 
is experienced, but she's not really that experienced either in the, the spacewalk type of thing. And uh, you all get one stress. Fair enough. We're starting off strong here, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, everybody in the audience, they got an awesome new rule called the busted compression suit rule, where nice. you get damage like to the them. suit, it could break and cause all kinds of problems. And yeah, so, so wanted to get that rule going right away. <laughs> you know what sucks? Sudden decompression. Yeah, so. So. Uh, Everybody, you're, you're like, you're breathing hard. You're breathing hard. You can hear the breathing and the sound effects. And uh, so everybody make an air supply roll. One at a time, just let the dice roll. Once once the dice is rolled for one, then we can move on to the next. I don't... Should we roll in order of uh, our... Uh, yeah, we'll start uh... start in order of... Uh, so Kyoto will be first. What is the suit, like the name of the suit? Oh, yeah. It's, it's on your character <laughs> sheet. I put it on your character sheet. Compression, oh, compression it's suit. Five. Yeah, it's the compression suit. Yeah. Oh, yes. IRCMK50. Mm -hmm. I can't, can't change my air to five. It should have auto, no? Yeah, if you yeah, put it, also. if you make sure it's in it your active have. inventory, yeah. it oh. it's fine at five. Oh. That active inventory. I, yeah, yeah, double click it. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, I gotta, Sorry, um, yes, I do have to do the, I gotta I double click thing. on the icon. All right, here's here's my roll. Oh, never mind. That's not my roll. Uh, hell yeah. All right, rolling. Oh. oh. No! Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> good. Is it, already. Is it... Listen, okay? All right. Panic, here, you know. I'm a big guy. Does it, does, it, it, you. does it come off your character sheet automatically? Yep. Yep. Sure does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of cool. It does come off the screen. Right. I also. Oh, 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 right. Wow, you guys are losing air like shape. crazy. <laughs> oh my god. We're yeah. all happy. Yeah. Oh. Also, also a thing, Mike, with the foundry. If you see how you, the different tabs at the right, like roll twenty. If you right click on one of the tabs, it'll bring out a little tab of that tab, and you can move it anywhere you want. Like if you right click on the the chat log, the roll, you can move that roll anywhere. That's really nice. It's just, it's just. Such yeah, it's kind of cool. So it's like you pop it out. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. You can pop out anything in this thing. It's pretty cool. So okay, so uh, everybody's good. You rolled your error, deducted your error, right? Yep. Okay, and. You're... Oops. I think I might have clicked on something. You I clicked don't... on the push. How do you even push an air supply roll? Well, it said push, and I was clicking on no. <laughs> no, no, no. And then it's, it rolled anyway. I think it's if you just click it, then it, it does. Yeah, I, I oh. think it does. It does say like yes, no, but I think it only means yes. It only means yes. All right, well, that's good to know. Yeah, it has no concept. It's not accepting that. no as an answer. Yeah. You had no. <laughs> You are this not is allowed to do RPG that. RPG again, saying consent is important. Yeah, you're <laughs> Your options are yes or affirmative. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you clicked on it, <laughs> make sure I lower my stress that it automatically gave me mm -hmm. for pushing. Okay, so you on the wall. yeah, you come to this uh, open airlock, and it's open right into the through the ship because there's an airlock that is on the other side, and all doors are blown open. There's uh, explosions, uh, charredness throughout the um, the interior and the exterior around the door. This. Mm. Does it appear to be beyond repair, or do you think it could? If we spend enough time, could we get this thing airtight again? Oh, beyond repair, you would need to uh, take this back to uh, your uh, Yanya, USCS uh, Yanya, to be able to repair this ship. But it could be repaired, but you just need like a star base or something to repair it with. Okay, would good. we at least be able to get the doors closed? No, they're blown out. Aww. Sad. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Did you say that the uh, the doors had scorching on the outside? Like, like on the outside of the ship? 
Well, from or the inside, it looks like it's... Oh, from the inside out. From okay. the inside. It looks like there was explosions yeah, was... from the inside. Okay. It was like, like a, was this a pirate scenario? But got it. No. No, it's inside. something blew up something inside. Yeah. And then one, it probably caused some kind of like chain reaction. I... Because... Well, let's not hang out here in the middle of nowhere. All right. A million miles up. Let's get in there. Uh, since you guys don't have access to the new rules, this is one of the new conditions. There's three new conditions in the new book, and one is this, uh, gravity dyspraxia. Uh, any PC operating in a gravity field half a G or more different than which they're used to, they gain one stress, which I gave to you already. And you suffer a negative two modification to all mobility and close combat rolls. Shit. After a shift, Sorry. after a shift in this new gravity, uh, you make a mobility to see if you acclimate it to it. If you succeed, you no longer suffer this effect. So, okay. yeah, if you play a shift in a zero G, then you don't get that effect anymore. I have zero G training, so I already get a plus two to, plus oh. two to mobility stuff in zero G. Okay. That is one of, that's the talent uh, Dravokovsky came with in Heart of Darkness. There you go. Right. Nice. Um, is, is there anything floating around in here? I mean, I know the doors have been blown open, but, like, do we see, like, personal effects floating throughout this, in, in this limited area we can see? Yeah, we should go in. Get yeah, in uh, scattered all around. You do see uh, pieces of uh, uh, chips of paint, pieces of uh, metal floating around. Uh, nothing significantly large. Um, y'all move over so I can. Yeah, get I'm gonna in. keep. I'm gonna keep moving in. I was last in the line to get to the door. Oh, it's the entrance to the show. Yeah, I was technically not. Y'all okay. got me being southern now. Third. Here, I'm already. Ahead. Ted, I'll go for it. <laughs> you walk into the ship. You're uh, a roughneck, and you're just dying to see what's wrong and everything with the ship. You realize that the bridge should be to your left, um, and you see a stairway that goes down to another deck. Hey, uh, perhaps we should go to the, the bridge first and foremost. Maybe we can get some data. I was going to say, if there's a black box, I bet that would be where it Yeah, good place to start. Mm -hmm. Unless Mother has her own room, but we would learn that from this bridge, likely anyway. Maybe somebody shoved a manual in the glove box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's crack her open. Okay, you could just press the door if you want. Oh, there door. Oh, that's cool. Can I walk they in? left her unlocked. Barge. Yeah, so you open this door and this the whole bridge has been like blown right Oh, everything, all the control panels, except one in, in uh, the far right has been just charred and blown from a giant explosion. Is it possible to pinpoint, like, where the explosion came from? Yeah. Based on, you know, like, where are the chars the most? Like, was this in the center of the room? Did it come from above? Was it one of the computer terminals exploding, etc.? Uh, give me an observation. Hell yeah. That is one of like the two things I know how to do. And you get a face oh, no. hugger. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. But I got the alternative uh, yeah. panic tables for things like this that don't have to do with uh, fighting, which I think they should add, should add as a supplement, I think. Um, I agree. Oh, I am good anyway. <laughs> it's nothing. You you have a bad feeling about this, but manage to keep your cool. I can't push it. Fuck. <laughs> you don't want to gain stress. Trust me. Like, well, I think uh, Mike has different philosophy on that, but uh... well, yeah, but I want to know what's up here. <laughs> hurt nobody. You gotta live on the edge, baby. <laughs> yeah. So. Pump me full of stress. <laughs> you don't know what, where the explosion came from at all, but uh, but something big happened in this room. There's one uh, half uh, alive computer terminal 
in the right corner there. Uh, Comtech. Give it that. Holy Comtech. Holy Comtech. Oh, boy. Oh, three successes. Wow. Hell yeah. Holy Comtech. Comtech. Yeah. You find a lot. Like, uh, you see that this bridge was deliberately destroyed. Uh, okay. All the nav data was deliberately wiped. All right, well, good. And there's an explosion it. that destroyed the, the bridge. Um, mm -hmm. But you do find what type of ship this is. This is an advanced scouting vessel built by the UPP. Oh, oh Seja, feels, Seja knows exactly what buttons she's pressing. That, and that's probably why you don't know the ship, because uh, the United Americas and the... Uh, United Nations don't know about this ship. It's probably everything's in like Cyrillic or whatever the uh I think it's yeah. Cyrillic. You're right. The yeah, every all the letters and everything are Cyrillic, so on all the keys that remain. Unless it's that a classic alien keyboard where there's no letters and just weird symbols that have no practical meaning. Nah. I choose to believe that the UPP would do better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye. Mm. All right. Well, uh, wiped this. That's about all you can gather from uh, this bridge. Is there like a black box or something that we can take? No, that's just uh, you managed to hack into a little bit of a hard drive and you gathered the magnetic data out of it. And that's about all you got. So was the black box then busted? Anything we could get from this? That's you got all the information you can get out of it. There's no yeah. use. You recorded in your little uh, device you got there, and that's okay. it. Okay, my little my little iPad. <laughs> we know the oh. name of the ship. Uh yes, it's the SSV. Uh, so call S O K O L. This was the Sokol, a uh, UPP-built uh, scouting vessel. Hmm. And somebody deliberately disabled it. Interesting. The bri this bridge, this bridge, what happened here was no accident. The nav data, navigation data specifically is gone. Well, if their goal is to fuck it up, they succeeded. But I mean, it had a crew. So where, where'd they go? That's a good point. I've been thinking the same thing. I mean, certainly yeah. some got fucked out into space, but not everyone, certainly. I mean, there's a lot of damage, but there's not any bodies. That's a lot of damage. No, nope, ain't gonna be found That's sailing a lot here. Of damage. Mm -hmm. Let's go take a look, see. Do we, do we have uh, communication with our ship at all, or...? Uh... Yes, and just as you're thinking about that, Tam, uh, Tan, uh, broadcasts to you. Uh, have you found anything? What's going on over there? It's, a uh, it's an old UPP, uh, scouting vessel, uh, designation SSV Sokol deliberately destroyed from the inside. The navigation data is missing. We have no record of this ship in their databases. Shaza, you know, have you known about this type of class of ship and never told uh, the United Nations? That's a bit of a, a leading question, ain't it? You're cut. You're cutting out. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's, uh, there's just like a. Is she just like crinkle something? Oh, yeah. um, you're, you're breaking. <laughs> tunnel. You're breaking that. We're yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're not passing through a tunnel. Uh, Repeat. Okay. Have okay. the United Nations not kept things from the UPP? <laughs> 
I would be careful with your words, sir. Watch your mouth. We're trying to convince him he's breaking up. <laughs> just, uh, just continue with oh, your mission. Sweet little mouth. I, I, I understand. I appreciate what you are trying to do, but I'd like to, uh, to uh, shut it down before it gets to the point of any uh, untoward violence or other things against my person. Well, that certainly wouldn't be very by the book, would it? So mm. that's a good point. Uh, Tam, mm -hmm. Tam, are you saying that this this here dial of vessel isn't even known? Yes, we have no idea about this ship. The UPP always keeping secrets, like they're planning something all the time, not being honest with everybody. It's old. Perhaps it's a defunct no longer produced uh, class. That's a good point. Well, uh, sounds like we have salvage rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see if there's what's worth anything in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the crew up and left, I'm imagining they took anything too valuable, but... They were blown up. Yeah, it depends how fast they left. Yeah. They probably they left pretty fast out of them doors, I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, whatever you can in 0.3 seconds. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's like enough time to go, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Julia, don't be, the, Athena, don't be the last one in the room. All of your baggage. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tab over. Yeah, I'm trying to tab over. That's like, it's like when you're in school and they're like, it's a fire drill and they're like, oh, yeah. don't take anything with you, leave all your belongings in, even mm -hmm. if the school burns to the ground. Mm -hmm. What is this? Ooh. Right over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing Ooh. some doors. Oh. I like doors. Uh, I not have opened that door. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's you, open now. Let's you take a look. Carl. Uh, you, yeah, you see uh, the armory, which is uh, the door just opens. Uh, cause the power's off, there's no, uh, security locks and it just opens and, uh, yeah, you find, uh, crates of, uh, weapons and armor. It's a, uh, AK-4047 rifles and 6B-900, uh, combat armor. You find, uh, five of each. Right. Well then. Oh, this feels like a win for us. Somebody yeah. was looking for a fight. So, uh... You can drag on your character sheet if you want to find it on your own time. You don't have to get it now. It's no big deal, but... Uh... I mean, unless somebody wants to start shit with us. <laughs> yeah. You said it was bad. Unless something wants to start shit with us. <laughs> <laughs> um... You said combat armor and... And those rifles. They're both in the weapons and the armor section. Okay. And you could each probably drag one on your character sheet. You don't have That's to equip 6B90. it. The combat armor, like, you're going to lose, I think, mobility. You're going to lose air, I think. So mm. you don't have to put it Which on that. Which combat not... armor was it? Uh, uh, I think it's the pulse one. The 6B90. The... Oh. UPP, yeah. 6B90. All right. Yeah, we can each, we can easily each haul one of these, these puppies back. Should be worth something. Oh, what, was the, what was the, what was the rifle? Uh, the AK4047. Okay. Oh, there you are. And, uh, yeah, Tab's like, did you find anything? No. The answer? No, we haven't seen anything <laughs> yet. It's just a big empty space so far. Better not be lying yeah. to me. It's gotta be well, something we'll on that you, ship. We'll let I'm, you know. I'm opening doors as we speak. We'll of course report anything that we find. I wanna see what this door is. Oh. Uh, yeah, you find a uh, EVA suits. <laughs> but. Uh, you would have to make multiple trips to be able to carry these. There's five EV, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. EVA suits we, if you want them. Do we need them, though? We've got 
sufficient suits. Is oh, that 100%. Um, here's here's a question. Uh, based on making models, like these, this colony has been out here. What, what do we say, seventy five years? Um, do these EVA suits look dated? Yeah, they are dated. Yeah. But still, same technology. Um, yeah. The air supply might not be uh, working in them. Um, they just look like they're from the 90s, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's still the same technology. Uh, the technology hasn't changed much uh, in, in regards to that. They already yeah, made they a, might... a tough, durable product. There but are more advanced re... stuff. It seems reasonable for us to assume that this scouting vessel is... It's been here a while. This didn't happen a month ago. This happened probably years ago then. That's what I would have gathered. One second. Oh, you never know. But considering there was no, you know, active we didn't pass any floating bodies or see any fresh blood. Yeah, no. no, no. You might be onto something there. Admittedly, I've never held a gun before. It's pretty exhilarating. Somebody get that Why gun. Why are you me. holding an uh, AK? It's the first gun awesome. you've ever held. I've, I've made claim. Start with a sidearm. You're going no. to tear. You're going to tear your shoulder out. Oh, I'm not going to push the button. Well, he, 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 he just pulled the button. Uh, we need to get this thing out of this man's hand. I'm from him. Turn the safety on and then hand it back to him. <laughs> Yeah, where is the kill button? Did you need did did you open something while I was gone? Did you open that door? No, no, no. Yes, no. you did. See, no. see, see no, not only is Cody and I playing the same character, we both also have cats. Seja, uh, <laughs> Seja, really, I don't know what happened when I was gone. I know you're probably clicking and never doing anything, so it doesn't matter. I'm saying oh, you open no. that door. You open that damn door. And when you I open, I, I've not been clicking anything. I only opened the EDA suit room, clocked it, and left. I haven't opened this one. Open the door. I will open it. Open the door. Ah! What the <laughs> shit? Oh no. I, oh no. What the fuck is that? We've made a horrible mistake. Ah! Yeah. Um, <laughs> Somebody yeah. close that door. <laughs> so I just close it. I want to yeah. close the one piece. No, no, close that door. What? What? No, no, close that door. <laughs> All right, no, fine. Pet dog. Seja. Pet dog. <laughs> Seja, you uh, this brings back memories because you've seen this before. It's uh, you you called it in your scientific uh, lingo. You called it the proto hive, and there's proto hive nodes all over there with tentacles, uh, weaving about. Absorbing the ship, it seems like melded into the ship, and all this goo and globs just slithering about. As you look at this thing, it brings back ultra memories. As you stand back, and uh, you, uh, you start thinking back at past memories, and you're just starting to lose your mind, and you gain two stress, and you have to make Fair. a panic roll. All right, now we, we just close the door. Let's get on. Just, just do a full. What the shite is that? I've seen some, I see some things, man, but that, that ain't no, I don't know what the hell that thing is. Yeah, what the hell am I even looking uh, at? You got to keep it together with that, okay? And everybody else gains the stress and makes a panic roll. Right. Uh, stress. Uh, stress. Uh, stress. Oh, God. Button to roll. Oh, no, no. God. Oh no! I am uh, not doing, not doing, not doing well okay. at all here. I've got a nervous twitch. I'm, yeah. I'm starting now to tremble. We're all stressed now. Yeah. yeah so. Thanks uh, for the extra stress, yeah, man. Like, I'm at four. Yeah. yeah everybody, everybody begins. gains an extra stress from the twitch. Uh, thanks to uh, O'Connell, the bartender who can't handle this. <laughs> it's not in his work <laughs> It's because I grabbed the, the AK-4047 and it's like, WHERE'S THE BUTTON?! I literally took it from- He's calling it a button. Press the button. <laughs> Why does he keep calling it a button? I don't even want to. That's, what, that's what's stressing me out. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. 
I literally took it from you to turn the safety on and handed it back to you. Well, I was actively <laughs> searching for the trigger, but insisting on calling it the button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, Sesha's technically keeping it together, but she is not keeping it no. together. You want to get the hell out no. of here, and uh, you realize, like, how the hell is, uh, you thought those portal hives were only on the Heart of Darkness space station. Uh, I forget what it's called, Erebos. Erebos. She's yeah. just standing there frozen in utter shock. Yeah, how is it here? And, like, from 75 years ago? Or is it now? You don't know, but it's, it's like... Oh, you want to get the fuck out of here? Is it reacting to, to our presence? I mean, we just opened the door on this thing. Is it just like a weird, wiggly, like, Squidward mess? Uh, in a sense, it, it, it you do read it does sense you, and you see these polyps uh, scattered about, and uh, one of them just bursts open, and all these spores go into the air. Slam the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't like mind terribly yeah, if I close this door. But, no, no. but mm -hmm. uh, this is like very stressful. You guys all got to make an air supply roll, please. Yeah, that's about. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, look at that. Throw it across the screen. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> And please, everybody, tell me how much air everybody has left. I oh, sorry. I have three. I only lost one. I'm down to two. Every time, every time we say air, it's yeah, that's why I keep thinking two. Every time. I'm all out of air. I'm so, sitting at three. So gonna die. Ted the trash man, sitting pretty. Yeah. Yes. I'm breathing shallow. Mm -hmm. Just keep it together. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you guys want to do now? After all um, that, go back. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> back across like, the tether. Realistically, I'd be getting the fuck out of here. I yep. don't think. Yeah. Tesha will. I would like to present. just put my head in this door as I'm on my way out. What, 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 it could be anything in there. Oh, that's why I said put my head in. I yeah. Anything more. You look in there, there's like boxes and crates of things. Uh, appears to be like food. Probably. Alright. If it's anything I'm gonna have to dig through, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna... Wait, wait. You would have to dig through it, yeah. Yeah, no. What? what? What's, in the lo what's in the lower deck? I don't think that that's an important question. I don't want to see anything this ship yeah, has I mean, to offer anymore. It, don't get me wrong, it, uh, there's something fucked up with this ship. So I'm sure maybe the lower deck might have something to illuminate some of that. I don't want to shed any light on anything like what was back in there. I, I would prefer that to stay where it no. is. There's no oxygen for it to burn. What? To, to burn it. Oh, okay. Yes, we are in the cold. Thirst. We have the means back on the ship to blow this thing out of here. Yeah, don't no. find out. No, 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 don't. Oh. Let's just get out of here. Yep. I'm right behind you. Okay. Um. I ain't never in all my all my prospecting right, days. Yeah, this is the kind of things we gotta be. It's the kind of thing we got me seeing out here. Kind of stupid. I got myself into. What am I doing? If you guys, uh, uh, I'll let you guys get back to the ship. Just one air supply roll. If you get down to zero, then there's gonna be problems. But oh no! Did you get down to zero? No, not yet. Oh god! I'm down to one. Two. I have three. I have two. I'm still four. Damn it. Okay, you're back on the ship. Can I get my air supply back? <laughs> Can I get the refill? New tank. We'll top her off. <laughs> yeah, it'll top off the old air. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tam is like, what did you find? That's some pretty fucked up shit, Tam, uh... to be honest with you. Something pretty fucked up. Yeah. 
there's something yeah. not right over there. Yeah. Sis is just shaking her head. Like, really, can we blow that thing up? Don't. Oh, not if it's important. Oh, not as important. Wait, up. That, whatever's on there is going to probably kill us all. Uh, Some sort of UPP experiment or something. So that touch it. So that's a UPP ship. How, how and, do you know about it? Why do you know yeah. we can't blow it up? We can't touch it. Yeah, what's going on with that? Because we're spores, right? They've survived this long. If you blow it up, you'll 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 just spread them. They've survived this long in the vacuum. What's to say they can't go further? How do you oh. how do you know all this? You don't seem too surprised. It was just like gross lumps started moving. Did you not see that thing? The little polyp that burst into spores? You did not see that? I saw something no, go pop. I don't know what polyp or spores are. That. You're saying that thing popped some sort of pustule just because we were there? Yeah. But there was no oxygen in that room. There was no oxygen on that ship. There's that ship's no been there for years. And you're saying that thing sat in that room, wiggling all about, waiting for us to open the door. Something. And, and what are we gonna do? Leave it to someone else to find? It's not like we can wrap it up like a dog turd and toss it out. Is that what you do with dog turds? Oh, uh, what do you do with them? <laughs> um. I guess that is a matter of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. To to rein this all back in a little bit, there's trying to be a colony established down on that planet. It's the not amount of... Okay, I was gonna say, because the amount of traffic that's about to come through this airspace... No, 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 no. Also, what, um... Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just, like, obsessively checking my compression shoe. The suit is there. Um... You said spore? Oh, jeez. Got spores on me? Yeah, do. Do we have any? Oh, they sort couldn't of... have traveled that fast, right? Do we have any sort of decontamination oh. procedure. Do you know any sort of decontamination that's gonna kill that? You seem to know awfully a lot about this damn spores. Probably setting it on fire. Well, that seems to work. <laughs> um, Inspector Tam's like. I'm gonna have a shower. I'll be right back. Inspector Tam's like, so how do you know about all this life forms there? Zaja? How do you know all this? Well. Do you know a venerable station? No, I don't think I do. station at one point, but it was uh, orbiting a black hole. The reason I know those things, I mean, there's no oxygen in that room, there's far less in a fucking black hole. And orbiting a black hole was the last time I saw something like that. What are you saying? We should just leave it be? I think the company would like to have a sample of this life form. No, 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 no. It needs to be torched. Or sealed away forever. Well. This, this, this can't, can't leave this place. We are out of communication range, so it would take like two weeks to send a message. 
So for now, well, ain't this a geographic oddity? Two for, weeks from everywhere. For now, we'll leave it at B. We know where it is. It ain't going anywhere. And uh, I think we should attempt a landing on the planet. What do you think? <laughs> if the planet's got anything like that's on that ship, I don't think so. This. So, do we know? So, when this colony was was active and in, in contact, um, was it most like what was the political sort of? Was it mostly you? Like, would this have been a ship trying to flee that planet that didn't make it out, or do we think this was like a ship coming in? It was because of this vessel. Yeah. It was, I'm just saying, if it came off of that planet, we might have bigger concerns. There was no UPP on this planet. Okay. It was a Wayland Yutani Third World Empire uh, mission. Okay. How did it get all the way out here? Um, yeah, if you want a sample, Inspector, respectfully, you can go get it yourself, because I'm, I'm not. I'll give you, uh, not. I'll give you access to that, uh, that intro so that you, uh, have a, have it in your books, mm -hmm. what this planet's Thank about. Thank you. Good deal. And, uh... Um, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm not touching that with the 10 foot pole. The last time. Oh, no. Counselor Lakota says, uh, aren't you all curious to see uh, if there's any survivors down there? That's what we're being paid for, right? I mean, sure, but if it's going to, you know, if there's going to be more spores involved, uh, I'm not there's particularly only... enthusiastic about that. There's only well, one way to know for sure. Mm -hmm. What do we have to fear? Oh, the... no, no, no. <clears throat> That's not the right accent. What is it we have to fear of these spores? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm fucking creeped out, but it, that would happen should they come in contact. We're talking about a, a nasty illness, a, a burn on the skin. The last time I saw something like that, I was with a crew of, I suppose, six others, including myself. Uh, I guess seven others, if you include Adrian. Adrian and I are the only ones here to tell the tale. Well, I'd like to hear his side of the story. Mm -hmm. As in the only ones alive to tell the tale. Hey, Goff, you're telling me that a bunch of spores killed your entire crew, and now oh, we've been in contact with these, these spores. A bunch of spores that did things to other people that did things to my crew that caused them. All right, did what to them, though? I can't even describe it. I, I would sure hope you can try. Uh, yeah, I was... Listen, I'm sure that you have a very fragile mental state about all this, but I would like to know what I'm walking into. Or walking out of. Or walking out I mean, I hope I'm, you know. <laughs> Something uh, it was awful. These, like, they, you know, they were bipedal like humans and they stood like humans, but they weren't. Something, they were some sort of alien. Almost. I believe they were eyeless. I'm not sure. They had really weird looking heads. They were practically pure stark whites and this and this came from contact with the spores 
Oh, it, it transformed them. Into a variety oh. of different... Into a variety of different things. Oh, sure. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian brought us a, a juvenile of one of them once. He's quite the hunter. So you're telling me that these make you into God's ugliest butterfly? God's ugliest butterfly that can psychically bitch slap you if you sass them. Okay. Okay. They didn't uh, speak. They just projected thoughts and ideas and images into your mind. Uh, I slowly turn towards our security uh, officer. Uh, yeah. So what is it that you'll be doing about this? Is, is, is he speaking? Are you speaking of her, me, or no, the no, situation? No, no, no. Oh, that's like a <laughs> boat. <laughs> oh, no, uh, the situation in general. Okay, yeah. So it's just like, ah. Uh... <laughs> you, you're the one with the job to press the kill button, right? Uh, you realize that uh, she is, um, she is a royal guard, royal marine, hey. and she's okay. proud of it from the three world empire. And she ah, knows, she's a Brit. and she knows that you're, uh, the same kind of thing, right? Hey. And she kind of looks at you uh, positively and, uh, she says, well, well, security calls for quarantine if you encounter any dangerous life form. But considering you didn't quarantine yourselves and now spread your whatever life form disease all across the ship, it's too late whoa, for that whoa, now. Whoa, whoa. Let's, okay. <laughs> uh, at that point, uh, Ted walks in with a towel around his waist. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you haven't been here for this entire conversation. No, he went and took a shower. <laughs> he oh my god. <laughs> he comes back and looks. Like, you come back yeah, and she's having a panic attack in the corner. <laughs> he's like, what is <laughs> He comes back and says, like, I'm good. I took my shit pipe shower. You know, I work I work industrial sewage. I crawl through some shitty pipe. And there's a I take a real thorough shower. That's the most thorough shower you can get is a shit tube tire shower. <laughs> I can teach y'all. You might you might want to take a shit tube shower. Have you been in a fucking uh, septic tank? Well, it's a little too late. Many. It's a little too late for that. If there's any dangerous uh infections or viruses or spores or anything, it's it's on our ship now. And uh Councillor Lakota. I think you should prepare and test the parameters of the ship for any kind of infectious diseases. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, I will get to my lab right away. And she leaves. Yeah, did I see any spores on my suit? No, you didn't. You just seen that go into the air. Uh, they're, you would yeah. never know anyways. They're so small. I hopefully okay. shut the door in, in their face. <laughs> Emphasis on hopefully, because this yeah. is alien RPG. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be, be the next to shower. Um, yeah. That... <laughs> Session one, and you're already kicking me in the teeth with my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all, you're all taking a shower. I take it. You're all getting paranoid now. You're all done. Well, oh, I yeah. think the rest of you are falling suit now, and then uh. Yeah, everybody's going, and, uh, well... I'm petting my cat. <laughs> I could... I'm taking a shower, and I'm petting my cat. The best we can do, everybody take a big, deep shower, cleanse off, and, uh, use this chemical, uh, Isoprol. It should get rid of all, any kind of infectious disease, and I guess we got, uh, a new modern, uh, 22nd century, uh, HEPA filter. And we'll run that through the air supply and see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Six feet apart. Yeah, <laughs> Old hat at this song and dance by now. All right, well. <clears throat> hey, hey, I'm in public health IRL, so. I suppose we should get down there so we can get back up here and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I think that the sooner we leave, the better. Uh, Emily, Emily's like, uh, Emily's like, leave. We just got here. There's money to be made down there. You want to leave? What the hell are you joining this mission for? Not to be killed by some weird alien 
caterpillar metamorphosis thing. I'm, I'm sorry. I did not envision my little escapade onto this colony in a cocoon. So. <laughs> Emily's like, well, now. Only so much money you can make if you're dead. <laughs> yeah, this hazard wasn't covered in my OSHA manual. <laughs> yeah, she. Same, same OSHA here. Still a thing? <laughs> We got Whalen Yutani involved. Hey. Whalen Yutani exists in this world. Oh, There's shit. shit. There's gotta be checks and balances. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Emily goes to Hal and, uh, well, now, honey, uh, maybe you should just go entertain, entertain Inspector Tam or something, uh, uh, oh. out here. Why? You know, you, got, you, you need a little. You got to be a little tough to survive out here in the frontier. Oh, you want to talk about toughness, honey? Bless your heart. <laughs> she hit him with the bless the heart. <laughs> you're killing me. I'm, I'm supposed to be having a panic attack in the corner, and you're killing me. I lean to the security chief. I've got dibs that wind will throw the first punch. <laughs> Listen. I'll take five of that. You're obviously yeah, feeling I got a bit big for your riches here. Um, but that's not really gonna give anything to the mission to be sowing all this little pettiness over here, hun. Um, so if you're feeling threatened by me, um, or by my presence on this ship, um, then you can just tell me to my face. Um, if you've got some little thing with Tam, if you've got some little thing with anybody else, um, that's your business. And, um, yeah, um, we can talk it out like adults. And frankly, you have not seen me be threatened yet. So if you'd ever like a demonstration, you can just let me know. But I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm a professional, unlike some people. Right now, honey. Mm hmm Yeah, that is right. Now I'm gonna go get cleaned up. And um I'm gonna refrain from saying anything else. Because I am a professional. All right, bye now. And I guess you talked her out, and she doesn't say nothing. It just uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> turns her attention elsewhere. When has already left if she has anything to say, so... <laughs> yeah, that just... will be said firmly to the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Inspector Tam, so... Uh, Cap... Uh, Pilot Dudge, are you ready to take us down? Dudge is uh, looking at his uh, computer, looking for potential landing sites, and he says, he, I detect a, a heat signature coming from uh, a latitude of 45 degrees north. Longitude, 18 hours, 38 minutes. Kind of a heat signature are we talking about? Are we talking about people or a machine? Maybe a big turbine of some kind? Power plant? Uh, Dave or look comes over the engineer mechanic. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a fusion power source if I hadn't seen anything. Uh, something alive down there. All right, well, that's a good sign then, right? At least the reactor's not uh, melted down. Actually, could I change that? It's not fusion. <laughs> yeah. I Is made a mistake. Fission? No, it's a... Uh, oh. It's a very weak battery-powered source. Ooh, okay. I feel like battery. there's a tiny bit of fission or fusion everywhere you go. So, you're not entirely wrong. Right, well, if that's running at least, that, that's something. Somebody has to keep it going, right? 
Exactly. It's a place to start. Given the battery supply left unattended, that'd be dead within 10 years. Excellent. Feeling better already. I can hear my kitten screaming at me in the background. Through okay, all this. so. There's Adrian trying to tell you I'm to get out. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll say get that. Get out of there, dummies. What the fuck I told you? <laughs> Pet Don't me, you bitch. <laughs> Pet me, bitch. <laughs> Feed me. Pet, feed me, ho. <laughs> Damn, Adrian's mean. <laughs> I mean, have you heard a cat when? Have you heard a cat when they're hungry? Oh yeah. <laughs> Maple, wow. when she wants my attention. Speaking of which, she's brought me her toy. This kitten oh. knows how to play fetch. That's we say is uh, he starts f- taking the ship down into the atmosphere, and uh, this ship or this planet is very. Uh, there's storms everywhere, almost constantly everywhere. There's very few patches where there ain't no uh, storm. And uh, it starts shaking the ship as you try. He tries to take you in like uh, an area that doesn't have much uh, storm. And he's flying over the countryside. And as he's flying over, you could see that uh, there's remnants of isolated s- settlements scattered everywhere because you're high up so you can see through the distance uh they're like they look abandoned uh it's like a red martian red tinged landscape and uh you see pipes smokestakes uh tanks and uh containers just like lying on their side like sand covering half of them everywhere as you fly towards the the signal you haven't reached it yet Any uh, any role play on that? Any good feelings that I have are starting to get negative. Don't really love it. Yeah. Ted's just taking it all in. I am petting my cat nervously. And, what, and what's the policy for buggering off? What? I would like to know if, if Tan has a policy for uh, how long until we have to bugger off of here. Although I would like to know his own personal bugger off policy. <laughs> Everybody needs to have a bugger off policy. If we land and everything's been abandoned, how long are we staying? Personally, not long. We have to pull the data that we're required to. Right. Or, uh, or else we don't get the shares. It at least generate a report with capital letters at the top. Dear, dear, holy God, for the sake of everything and that is everything, do not fucking put the colony here. It's a bit late for that. Okay, and uh, uh, they may try again. You have uh, the storm breaks. And you fly towards where the power source is. Uh, you pinpoint the location. And you see that the, in the middle of a vast rocky plain, there's like uh, a, a ravine with chasms and chasms. And uh, you fly over and it says, you see that there's a facility tucked neatly at the bottom of this wide ravine. And there's power signature coming from there. And you can see on the top, there's like a glint of solar panels. And uh, you can see windmills because you're maybe about 500 meters up. And uh, ironically, so about half a kilometer away, you see this derelict ship that's full of dust and sitting there powerless. Any chance that ship looks um, familiar, kind of like... I don't know, UPP make, scout design. No. Uh, no, it's, uh, you run it through the database and it's, yeah, it's a third world ship. Oh, okay. Whew. I guess the UPP 
were just like genuinely scouting. Hopefully they brought whatever it was with them. Mm-hmm. What this is... facility... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. No, you're fine. I was just going to ask what kind of class of third world ship it is. Uh, you can't... Yeah. You can't make out the class. Oh, actually, it's a bison class. Bison class ship. Oh. As you, um... The pilot, the uh, Dutch, he signals like, there's no way we could land inside that ravine next to the settlement. We have to, the closest I can get us is uh, maybe near the, the ship, actually. There's a there's a clearing near it. It's about a half a kilometer away from the settlement. Uh, that would still require a, a piloting role, but uh, at least, you know, <laughs> as close as I can get us. Well, if you have to roll dice, it's best to sit down as soon as possible, I suppose. I, I suppose. I mean, half a kilometer isn't that long to walk. No. What do we um? What do we know about the atmosphere of the Very besides the, the storms and all? Is it breathable? Uh yes, it's breathable. Uh, it was on your uh, little report there. Uh, um. Yep. We'll just need to get some like goggles and tie a little cloth around our face. Oh like yeah, terraformed. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Does it say? It's, I'm it's, scanning now. Does it tell us what the gravity is? The gravity is like almost one g, so it's very close okay. to Earth. Like. Oh. We're not gonna. Gravity, yeah. We're not gonna get fucked by gravity again. No. <laughs> not yet. And so, uh. Sounds like the first time. <laughs> he finds a landing spot. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's cool. And he makes a piloting roll. Oh, and like he does roll. it. Like that. Hell he yeah. A, he does it with a little Holy flare. piloting, Batman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Holy piloting, Batman. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm glad we could take that and, and run with it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we have Holy Comtech. Holy Comtech, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I've landed. Um, you see that? <laughs> everything Very seems nice. good. Everything's good. No damage to the ship. Very nice. Welcome. Well done. You can get an euphoric feeling being on this. Uh, world so far away uh, that uh, you all lose one stress. Oh, nice. Ooh. Oh, oh, didn't mean to roll that. In the background, my kitten is demanding I play fetch with her. Oh. So if I'm turning away, um, it's because that's how I keep her. Because there's more important from... things to do. <laughs> no, nah, it's because the poor thing, the poor little thing, is insistent. Is the uh, is the wind whipping down? You said, are we in one of these like chasms kind of at this point, kind of like the art here, or are we kind of above the chasm, or is this just kind of a rocky area? You're in the same ravine that the the base is, but it's okay. it's to the south on your on your map. It's just about a half a kilometer down. And as you're looking through your uh, port out the windows and that, uh, you see uh, people approaching. Six people. Oh, which I didn't adjust for the map, but. We should all Giants. have like goggles and like things to like tie around your face. And if it's sandstorm and that's not gonna feel good. <laughs> And they're yeah, all no. looking outside. Uh, they're walking slowly up to you, and they, they're they giving you, like, a little wave as they uh, approach your ship, and I'll be right back. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, well, I don't know if I expected to, to find people this quick, eh? 
Yeah. Yeah. He just landed and there's just people. <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> these are probably. What if these are the the crew from the derelict ship right there? I mean, maybe they saw the same signal we did. Uh, I was, I was gonna, uh, I was, I was kind of curious when we saw the the solar panels and the wind turbines mm-hmm. uh, about. I mean, if the that battery could be self sustaining in any way, but. I mean, I suppose this is our answer, and not that? Yep, that's what we're here to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's go find out what's going on with these fuckers. Well, uh, since this, this is your first mission, uh, Tan speaking, and uh, he says, well, I'm coming with you because, frankly, I don't trust you, and you're new, and I want to see how you uh, perform, how you talk to these um, colonists. I want to see everything. He's I mean, if you wanted to say this army, this ass nicely, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's a cat! Everybody's staying. Uh, what about the cat? Are you gonna bring it with you or are you staying? Um, I'm gonna leave the cat for now. I may bring up the fact that he exists if they want to see him as like a peace offering. That was a terrible throw. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't kill us, please. We have a cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just hold it up, like ah. <laughs> we come in peace, I swear. We come in peace. Holds up cat. The cat's just like, <laughs> put me down. That cat seems violent. Kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> the cat doesn't have a, a streak of violence in their soul. I mean, yeah, they are gods, perfect killing machines. Um, with when we lost our stress, would my panicked condition have gone away? Yes, yes. Okay. That only lasts, it usually lasts a round or turn. So out of combat, it usually goes away. Gotcha. So you you come out of the ship, right? Emma. Amelia? Amelia, yes. Amelia comes forward, like, uh, first to talk and saying, uh, we don't see uh, many folks around here often. Um, you gotta say the same. Who are you? Well, we're uh, we're here on a humanitarian mission. <laughs> humanitarian. Let's go with the tan. Well, we're human, so you here for us? Yeah, that would that would fall into that category, sure. So, uh, who are you affiliated with? Uh, the UN sent us, right? Yes, officially. Like, like I'm like, oh god, I'm trying to scramble to look for it. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, it's the uh, <laughs> the people you like. Don't worry about it. I think we're with all the letters. Like the UN. <laughs> Whoever you like, that's we where we're from. A wide variety of uh, nations act in in, uh, in reality. Yeah, all, all the letters and a couple numbers. Yeah, but um, we were sent to reestablish uh, contact. Uh, this this colony. It's been a good number of years since anybody outside's really heard from y'all. Uh, we didn't really know what was going on, which uh, cue the you know humanitarian part. Um, United Nations left us here to rot. Well, where the fuck you been? We've been trapped here. Trapped. You left us here. No supplies, nothing. Spend for ourselves. Nobody knew that. Or at least I was not informed. <laughs> there was a well, million, millions of people here. Now there's like eight of us. Contact got cut out. A good, what, 80 years ago? Were there not the solar storms and the radiation and everything? There were like a bunch of ships sent to see what was happening out here and they never came back. Oh, is that your excuse? Solar storms? I mean, I don't make those decisions personally. 
What? Danger her three the eight. Let's rewind for a moment. Did you say there are eight out of a million of you left? Yeah. Yes. Millions. We had up to 10 million people on here. Some catastrophic losses. Yeah. What happened? What kind it's of world was in? Time. Mainly starvation. Weather. Oh. There's some bad indigenous life on here, too. Mm. What? That's the one I don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't like any <laughs> of them. <laughs> I don't like any of them, but uh, the, the most recent one you mentioned is the one I'm most likely to run into. What sort of oh. life? Oh, we got locust swarms. Uh, got a harvester, too, uh, but we brought that here to dig out a uh, whole caverns to to mine uh, all those great gems we could find here. I got a good collection. So I do believe I remember those guys. You know what a harvester is, right? We got one in the rural we got one penned up in a, a prison container. I mean, what oh. prison? You don't want to get bit by one. Uh, well, I right, uh, that is a lot to take in, to say the least. You guys don't know what a harvester is? Uh, I, I can't say I do. I remember reading it in the book, but I don't remember much about it. There. <laughs> I just remember... Uh, it's like... Uh, it's, it's like... It looks like a... 50 feet tall. Tardigrade. <laughs> it looks like a tardigrade. <laughs> had sex yeah. with the dude. Yeah, worm. Targaryen, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> was this Dune? They yeah. brought, yes. Yes. We, we brought them here because they're good at drilling holes in the ground. And, uh, yeah. And some of them got away. Uh, but we got one. We got one with a nice uh, collar around it that keeps it under control. That's a good place. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose you should t- take us to your leader or, or take us to where you're living. I mean... Take us to your leader. <laughs> or the other three of you, two of you? I can't and count. Yet, there were eight total. I'm, I'm literally a scientist. I don't know how to count. <laughs> how, how did you survive? Mm-hmm. That's just the most important question. Uh... They look at each other, you realize, like, the three of these... Uh, see, we're two families that are left. Mm. And, uh, they look Why at... Why is that e- one so happy? They look each- at each other with, like, kind of hate and disgust. Him. You can tell that these, these, uh, people don't like each other. Jesus. Oh, so, like, Benny, Morgan, and Violet versus Diego, Danny, and Amelia? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Doesn't that suck, though? You get 10 million people, and then the people that are left are the people you hate. It's the Montagues <laughs> and the Capulets yeah. are the You're only like, God people damn it. left. These assholes, they had to be the ones. Amelia's like... He, uh, hmm. Yeah, we, we're the only ones left. Uh, we don't like each other. We admit that, both of us, freely. But we need each other to survive here. But now that you're here, things have changed now. Are you going to rescue us? Take us off this hell? Isn't that what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah, <laughs> you, look at, you look at Tan? I was going to say, I'm just looking at Tan like, well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they want a GTM, I don't, I don't see any problem with it. Look at Tan. Sounds like a good idea. Tan's, mm-hmm. uh, Tan's like, yes, yes. We're going to rescue you, uh, but we want... We still think this planet is good for our own purposes. Uh, We would like to see uh, your base and everything you have in it um, so we could report this information back to headquarters. Laying on real thick there, (laughs) Tan. Just just say the thing. (laughs) Just say it with your chest. Emily's Emilia's like, uh, okay, very well. uh, Let's go back to our base and I'll show you around. And um, y'all said that there were eight of you. Where's the other two, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, they are on uh, 
prospecting mission in in up north. Uh, they're looking for food, actually, because we're running a little low. Okay. Um, Any food are you eating while you're here? Well, we kind of grow our own uh, vegetables, but get protein. Uh, sometimes we cut a piece of meat off the harvester. Or uh, there's indigenous life that we uh, hunt. But you got to be aware of those locust swarms, though. They eat right through anything, man. We got a little magnetic field surrounding our base that uh, kind of protects us from them. Mm. As long as we got That's power, like, we're safe. They got a citronella. <laughs> Is it possible that maybe that's been cutting you off as well? I mean, when we were above the planet, we were trying to look and trying to communicate, but couldn't get through to anything. Uh, I wouldn't imagine that would be the cause. It's these storms. They're crazy. That's why we picked this ravine to settle our base. They go up in the lower atmosphere, but mostly they stay up in the higher atmosphere. But every now and then they come down, and if you get a big one, it could really cause damage. So we got a storm shelter that uh, we uh, uh, saves us from that. Because you don't want to be caught dead in one of those storms. You'll be dead. It'll skin you to the bone, almost. Have you... This is going to sound strange. I, I don't mean to be uh, speaking out of turn, but have you seen any ships on the in the sky anything flying in like orbit among the sky that you can see has anybody else come you you say nobody else has come down here in the entire time you've been your group has been here nobody nobody up until one year ago You see, the ship came, and we we're glad to see them, but they weren't friendly at all. They kind of ignored us and held us back with guns. Then they went into our old ship, and they blew out all our navigational data. Kind of destroyed everything on the bridge. And then they uh, got in their ship, and they left. Were they... <laughs> Did they speak with accents from resembling mine. Uh, no, actually, uh, English. English accent. Well, you, you, you said they, they blew out your old ship. Did y'all have a, um, an old, like, UPP, kinda? Or is that your ship up on the, where we, near where we landed, or is it, did they take it off into orbit? Our ship's right there where you, we where you landed oh, okay. there. That's our ship. Sorry. I, they, they, mentioned, was... they mentioned they uh, mentioned a name Gorham. I don't know what that means, but uh, they wanted to destroy the navigational data. I don't know what's was so important about the navigational data. Anyway, that that was a year ago, and that was the only people we've seen in in our records the last hundred years. Gorham is the name I believe that was given. To this place by uh at least our records <laughs> he started calling it a peach it does to be fair it does look like a peach from space i kind of prefer the peach to be honest gorham sounds like some uppity guy yeah i agree right Amelia's like, I've been dreaming of pictures of Earth and the beauty of the green and the blue water. Oh, I would love to sit on a beach on Earth. Oh, I said peach, like the fruit. Well, I'm saying beach, honey. <laughs> oh, okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't misheard. <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to find those these days, but you you could you could have this peach. I want a beach. <laughs> That's fair. Could you, could you see the name of the ship that came down? Uh, honestly, I didn't even pay attention to that. But if they were English. But it honestly looked like it was uh, a colony ship, just like uh, us back in the old days, you know? It had the same, like, the World Empire type of build to it. 
it's certainly English then. Three World Empire. Hey, but it, it wasn't something you recognized. Other than that. Well, that was our ancestors, right? Right. Mm -hmm. My grandpa. So, yeah. Hmm. Can I, looking at, at Tana's, Tana's with us still for this conversation, right? Yeah, he's there. Yeah, does it, looking at him, does this seem like any of this is a surprise to, like, do I get any inclination that he knew that there was some sort of contact made between Three World and, and these people beforehand? Or is he just kind of like in, in the dark as much as, like, you know? Vibe check Tan. Vibe check Tan, please. <laughs> uh, Inspector Tan is like, uh, no, there's, nobody has made contact with the these uh, spin world colonies for 75 years. Not that we know of. Well, maybe there are some things they didn't write in that little book of yours, Inspector. Although, as love, as much as I love the pile on Tanya or Tan, it is possible that these six are a bit loopy. They were, they had all been born here. They never, they never known anything about this rock. Don't, yeah, don't just immediately label them hysteric. I didn't call them hysteric. Y'all put them a little bit cracked in the head. I mean, I almost you, pulled your. Yeah, head. means about the same. Did. Well, hey, if you're, there's only eight of you left on a planet, you're liable to invent stories to make things more interesting. Or somebody's trying actively to like prevent this place from being found again. I sure that's possible, but gotta take these people off on purpose. I'm what like, seems more likely? Inspector Tan's like, oh, you guys are so paranoid, suspicious, like those old time conspiracy theory people who don't believe in global warming and stuff like that. Just. I'm sorry. Did you not hear what I was just <laughs> telling you about? Uh, after we saw, after we saw that derelict. Well, that derelict might be separate from here. They might not have made it down here. But the nav, the navigation was blown on that derelict too. Where I, I need to see this base. I, I don't like this. I. Well, I got the I got the vibes. The vibes are the vibes are vibing and they're vibing bad. Vibes are <laughs> rancid. The vibes. <laughs> you guys like have no idea what's going on here. I like that. No, I don't like it. I don't, don't like none. it. I don't. All I know is my backstory kicked me in the teeth in like an hour and a half of us playing, and I I, I know this can't that can't be it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's a mystery. And wow. Emil is like, should we head back to the camp? Yes. Mm -hmm. I seem like a thing to do. Okay. We'll lead the way. Uh, and you start walking and walking, and you get about maybe 400 meters. Uh, winds start to pick up. Oh, no. And it's blowing in a storm. And then you hear uh, communication coming on the comms. Uh, Blair comes on your comms. You hear uh, pilot Dudge. Blair, you hear me? Yeah, Dudge? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm detecting uh, a big storm coming in from the upper atmosphere. It's coming down. And it's really big. It's going to blow the ship apart. I suggest you guys seek shelter because uh, I got to take the ship up into space. It's not going to survive the storm. So you guys are on your own until the storm settles, and then I'll be back down to get you guys. Dodge, Dodge, where, the, where, 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 where are we supposed to go? Uh, uh, back to their base. They said they had a storm shelter. All right, all we we, we got to get moving. There's 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 a storm coming. We need we need to go. Dodge is leaving. Oh, I don't like it. Well, you better come back for us, Dodge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
what they said. Well, we'd love to see the storm shelter. Yeah, and uh, quick. Yeah, yeah if that's that. the first stop of interest. Um, should I take? Should I have taken my cat? No, I left my cat. The cat's on the ship with Dutch. The cat's on the yeah. ship with Dutch. The cat gets to survive this ordeal. <laughs> what? No, did you put him back on the ship? Really? I, did, yeah. I, did, I, I left the kitty. I left, I left him on the ship. <laughs> I know you guys don't want a cat to die, so yeah, okay, he's on the ship. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I so. Didn't want to take him session out session two will be the, the Dutch and cat story. <laughs> we all die. Yeah. Yeah. I just I take just... over NBC. Someone has to deal with being tan. No, 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 oh, no. no. Somebody, somebody is. Like, the Dutch is just like piloting the ship and he's just like flying it like normal. It's like a little bumpy, but you know, it's fine. And then the cat jumps on him from behind, scares the shit out of him, and then he crashes. <laughs> oh, no. As, as, right as you're going, you're walking, uh, you had to go over this little hill and there's like uh, little tiny uh dust devils around building up as the wind starts picking up and you look and you see this horror of a storm like something you never saw in your life and it's like holy shit what kind of a storm is this it's not even like a hurricane and that's what you see coming at you oh fuck that <laughs> mm, nope oh my god <laughs> And you see the light of the base ahead of you and this giant storm and Amelia is like, holy fuck, we never ever had a storm like this. Would you guys bring some curse or weathering manipulation technology here or something? <laughs> I'm not that kind of scientist. Yeah, that's right. We dropped a giant fucking storm on you then flew down to I'm meet an before. I'm astrophysicist. How, how quickly can we get to this shelter? It's about 100 meters away, and we better fucking run. And as you're running, oh my god, you see all these towers that were in the field start collapsing as the wind starts knocking everything down. The solar panels are flying in the air. The windmills are flying in the air. And you guys need to run. Oh, no. Run. Those other two guys are dead as a doornail. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. So Amelia's right. like, our only chance is to make it inside the storm shelter. That wind will rip us to shreds. Where's the where's the storm shelter? Straight ahead in the control block. Okay. Let's fucking go. Each one of these are zones. Okay. Oh, uh, we'll start off with. Uh, it's actually a roll initiative. I'm gonna do initiative here. Uh, hold on, I'll do it for everybody. Don't worry. Oh. I was wondering how do you do that on this? <laughs> there should mm -hmm. be a, a thing. The combat tracker is the second tab. I'm gonna roll for everybody. Oh, it's card. I forgot it's cards in this game. Any alien, usually. not let me start the combat. What the hell? <laughs> start it. <laughs> we all click draw initiative. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Zero. Where is that under? Uh, when you under go to the little counter. swords, you click the little oh. card deck next to your name. Swords? Oh, swords? Yeah. The little swords on the, the upper on right. the like tab, the sidebar with the chat and the little person icon. Ooh. Oh. I see um, yeah, there's like two cross swords. Yeah, you said next to your name. Yeah, next to your little character picture. Okay, uh, no, I did it. I did on it. A, I did it already. Right. No, I did it for everybody. Save time. I mean, it's not on the the thing. Yeah, I'm not. You're not you, on it. You killed. Oh. You killed yeah. Halwyn. She's not here. Oh, that's yeah. That's because she didn't do her character till last. <laughs> I didn't get around to that. Okay. Wow, Karen's <laughs> blaming it. 
wrong here. All right, okay. that's, the, that's the shade. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's do it again. There, okay, I'm gonna roll for everybody. Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, Wait, Tan. Was third. Tan gets to go was... first. Oh, I thought it was ascending. Uh, it does it automatically. Oh, the first yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, Tan gets to go first. He's like scared out of his mind. Holy shit, man! Oh, yeah, and he's like it. running ahead of the crew. And he rolls mobility. Oh, well, he hasn't got much, but he succeeded. So he oh, moves yeah. two spaces. Uh, Danny. Danny rolls. He fails. Oh, no. I don't. Man is dead. So he rolls run and drops prone. Oh, shit. Uh, Halwin. Um, yeah, is just agility? A mobility. Mo mo okay, mobility. Apologies. All right, well. Yeah. Oh, so you get to move two with the Inspector Tam. Yeah, okay. Lovely. I also need to roll stress. Okay. Oh, you're fine. We're good. We're good. You're fine. Everything's you're great. Right. Morgan. He makes it. Amelia. You guys probably like Amelia, right? Maybe you develop. You don't care about her. Oh, she makes no, it. I, like her. I don't know her. <laughs> I think she's cool. We Viol friends. Violet. <laughs> Oh, Violet okay. misses. She falls prone. The wind just pushes her down, and she's like falls to the ground. Uh, how do you pronounce his name? Dago. 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 He makes it. Okay. Okay. So he gets. Uh, Finn, your turn. All right, here we go. Looking okay, good. Oh, oh you go yeah. one and drop prone. You trip over a rock and fall to the ground. Oh, Here's the bartender. You don't know how to. You, you're not made for this. <laughs> no. What are made for? Sprints. Short sprints. This is literally a short sprint. No, no. Short it's... sprints to the back room. Short sprints. <laughs> how far is it to your back room? Well, that is actually. Ted. Ted. Uh, can I try and help someone up? If you get a mobile extra mobility on your success, you, you can use it to help. Get two. Oh, no! but you, you yes! panic. Roll the panic first. I believe in you. Does that work? No. I believe in you. Hell yeah. Okay, you're good. Uh, so you get one success, you could help somebody. Uh, I'll help. Uh, my man Finn. Okay, you take oh, you take Finn with you. you. Pick him up as you're running by. You just grab him because you're so strong, and you pick him up as you run by him and just take him with you to Wee. this zone. Mm -hmm. uh, Seja. It's like getting me on the back of Legolas' horse. <laughs> so what is this? This is mobility then. Mobility. Derp, derp, derp. I'm pretty okay at that. No. Oh, well. You trip you over rock, fall it flat in your face. Wait. Use your story point. Use your story point. And she's got three. She wants to waste them. <laughs> it's up to you. Wow, he just waste. <laughs> yeah. Specifically says waste them. Uh, I don't want it. No, no. No? Up to you. No. Nah, next round. Not dangerous if enough. I, okay. If I heck it up next round, I'll do it. Blair. Yeah, you make it. All right. Nice. Mm. Move your yeah. token two spaces and Benny. Everybody we care about is already. Everybody else that we actually care about right now is over there. Oof. Benny's, uh, Benny's, Benny's young. He's like scared. Oh, shit. Oh. Next round. Uh, Inspector Tam. The wind's getting stronger now. Mobility. What? 
Fails. Damn. No. Tan is hecked. He moves one and falls to the ground prone. What is this quap? Danny. Quap. <laughs> oh god. I feel like. Hey. Oh my god. Ooh. He gets to yeah, Danny. Okay. He he feels that he gets up off the ground and he Danny takes boy. he takes uh, Benny by the arm and Violet by the arm. And uh, he brushes them, runs. Since he was prone, uh, one act, one success gets him up, and the other one gets him here. So he can't move two, just one. Seja. Like, fuck this lady. Oh, it's my turn. Seja. I thought it was mine. Or, uh, Danny. Did I miss no, somebody? It or it's, it's Hellway, right? Yeah. Hellway. Yeah. Yeah. Hellway. Yeah. I'll win. Oops. Uh oh, push it. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> um, are you gonna push or are you just gonna. Uh. Do it. Yeah, I'll push it. You can stress, afford it. Stress is good. Push. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the little passive aggressive message at the bottom oh, no. of the check. It just literally is like, you have a total of zero success. Yeah, I'm okay. So you make wow. it there. And you uh, fall. Grand total of Great. Zero. The wind's right. blowing right on you. To tan. You fall to the knees and like you can't even get up. It's like you're feeling the the sand prick your skin. It's like taking little chunks of your skin off. Uh -huh. um, this isn't what I meant when I said I wanted to exfoliate more. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> He makes it to the, the the door, but that's all he gets. Uh, Amelia. Well. Wow. Maple is chirping out of solidarity. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Danny got Amelia and Violet. Actually, no. She's back here because Amelia and Violet are with Danny. Danny took them both with their successes, so they don't even get the roll. Um, Dejo. Dago. Wasn't that Benny Diego. and Violet that... Yeah, Amelia... Yeah, he got Benny and Violet. Yeah, so he, he automatically succeeded with them. Amelia would get to go forward. Uh, Finn. Do it in a panic. I can't push with a panic, right? Yeah. Push it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't. You can't push if you get a face hugger. You can't push. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You can't. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you move one and fall to the ground. Oh. As the wind okay. is so strong. Uh, Ted. All right. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Nothing. That's what I can do. I'm gonna push that. You're gonna push it? Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh give me a panic God. roll on mobility. Six. Oh. Just the six. Uh, what'd you get? Six plus your stress. What's that? Uh, three. So you you got nine? Because I use a different chart than what they have there. I'm using a mobility uh fumble chart. Uh, mm -hmm. drop item damage tool. Your careless handling leads to damage tool or lost item, depending on the situation. You tell me which item you want to lose off your body, and you lose uh, it. Uh, assault rifle. Okay. The one we just picked up? Yep. Disposable. <laughs> I can't shoot Fucking well. communists, am I right? Seja, you're all by yourself in the back. I all by myself. Oh, you panicked, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's your stress? Nine total. Nine, nine total? I got nine. What are you uh, seeing? Oh, the roll nine, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, drop item. What are you dropping? Uh, I, uh, probably, we'll go with my electronic tools. Maple. Now is not the time, I'm dying. Okay, 
electronic tools gone. Blair. Okay. Okay, you make it to the door. Uh, Benny. Bye. Skips. Okay, now we're at the suspector. Holy shit, it's round three. The storm is really bad. Uh, he's gonna roll. One. He makes it to the door and uh, opens the door. Danny. The wind is coming over. Anybody trapped in here, here, is gonna get uh, base dice four damage. Uh, Danny is rolling. Two. Oh, shit. He makes it into base. Okay. Alwyn. Okie doke. You've now rotated. Okay. All uh, right. Panic roll. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Six, you're okay. Five. All right. But we'll say you just get up. But you're taking, uh, Base dice four damage. Okay. Uh, hold on, that doesn't work. You take one damage from the wind. Okay. And I do not get to move forward. Uh, you got up. You're prone. Oh. So your one move is the get up. Okay. Uh, Morgan. Is, uh, where's Morgan? Okay, he goes in the door. Uh, Amelia. She makes it too. She's at the door. Violet. She makes a one falls prone. Okay, goes in the thin. Your turn. You're prone. Oh. Gotta push it. Yeah! Oh, we gotta panic. It. Come on, something good. <laughs> I believe in you. Six, you're good. So, All right. you make it, uh, you succeeded, right? So, uh, I succeeded twice. Yep. So I got up and moved one. Yeah. Ten. No, you only get one. You only get one. No, Wait, you succeed. You were, you oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Ten. That's all good. Oh, am I still panicked? Uh, you got to roll. Okay, but you succeeded, so you move one. And uh, you take a D4 base dice. No damage. Seja. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Get along. All by myself. Benny's there with you. Oh, oh my! No. Ah! Oh no. Ah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I got four. Okay, so you get up, but uh, you can't move, and uh, you get damage. So this is not too good for me. One damage. Uh, Blair. Uh, you can get you can get in. You don't need to roll. Uh, Benny. He made it. He makes it to the door. Uh, Spectre Tam. He gets in. 
Danny. He stays, uh, Helen. Okay. Okay, all right, okay. Okay. That's a nine, so I also lose something, I'm guessing? Yeah, you, uh... Lots of nines. Yeah, you drop an item, you pick which one. Um... I... will also lose my assault rifle. You drop the item as you run towards the inside. I will lose the combat armor. My apologies. There. Love Uh, Finn, wow. Finn, you go in. Uh, Ted. Okay. You gotta roll. Let's roll panic. You're good, you make it in. Seja, you're the only one not having problems. I'm... Maple. Adding to my IRL stress. Oh my god. I swear to god if I die here. This is the worst stuff, uh, <laughs> man. What a way to go. Eight. You must use your next action to seek cover. Uh, your stress level is decreased by one, but the stress level... Okay, you lose one stress, though. No, but you don't, you don't move anywhere. And you're taking damage. 46. Nothing. Oh, okay, alright. Uh, everybody moves, gets in. Uh, Violet just got to roll. And we'll say she makes it in. Uh, we'll just do you, Seja. <laughs> End my suffering. Now it's uh, six, 66 <gasps> for damage. All right, I like that roll, at least. We like okay. that roll, though, too. Yeah, so you make it in. And you're Wait, running. Do I take the damage again? No, because it was just this zone. The, the, the wind's coming from above, and now it's starting. the storm is starting to come in and cover the whole complex. Because it's coming from this direction, right? So that's why you're kind of safe here, but not for long. So you guys run. You run in, and Amelia's like, let's get, we gotta get to the basement. Get to the basement. And you run, you open this door, she's opening the hatches. Y'all running as, uh, you hear everything falling. And then uh, you run, you get to the storm shelter in the basement, and she starts, uh, closing the hatch and closing it. Then you hear a big boom. And. It's like the whole structure of the place is falling in. Does it normally make that sound? Uh, Amelia's like, no. Ooh, I think, I like uh, it. I think the water towers smashed our complex. Oh. Okay. Hey. Well, ready? Sure. And so you're lying in the storm shelter. Uh, and you can hear uh, it's starting to get quiet, like the storm maybe have passed. And then Amelia kind of goes up to the top there and opens up the latch. And. Uh, as she opens the latch, all this water starts coming in and she, she's trying to hold it open and then it, the slam shuts <laughs> on her. And uh, give you a picture of this. And she's like, oh my God, we got three water tanks of water above us. And we're trapped in this shelter. 
And the only way out of here is to open this hatch and flood the shelter. <laughs> and she ends up closing that and locking it and saying, holy shit, we need some time to think. And uh, that would be a better way. That's a good, uh, that's a good spot to end the session, guys. Oh. Big so, yeah. Oh. <sighs> God. Desert planet. And we're looking at drowning. Of yeah, <laughs> right, of all the ways to go on a desert planet, yeah. we're gonna drown. I almost yeah. died from sand. <laughs> <laughs> After all you've been through. At least there were no worms. Mm -hmm. At least At there least. were. Yeah. There's no dune worms and no spores yet. 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 Well, well I do have to kind of sign off, so I will uh, see you guys in a couple of weeks. Wait, Mike, Maybe. wait, Mike. You gotta, oh, wait, we're waiting. Yeah, part of, part of the, the, the end of uh, the talk show at the end is part of the thing, because a lot of people like the, that watch the show like to oh. hear, listen to us talk at the end. And if you leave... Uh, it's okay if you leave, but you got to leave your camera on because you're screw up all the cameras. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're held up. Yeah, I, I got to be up at uh, five thirty for work. So. This is a ten minute talk. That's all. It's a ten minute talk, and then we'll be done. You can, you can drift off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mother of fuck. Whew. All right, post mortem. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I, I love how. Sesha just casually says, oh, yeah, there's aliens. And y'all are like, y'all aren't, oh, this bitch is crazy. You're like, oh, yeah, there's aliens. So uh, what well, the be, fuck, hon? To be fair, alien, we know aliens exist of, of a kind, right? No, we all just, just think they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Blair's just like, and, and we, we saw it. We know that's yeah. not, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys did, but y'all's characters, like, I was expecting for you to be like, this bitch is crazy. If we hadn't seen it, I think that was probably yeah. Yeah. The, the result. <laughs> uh, I still think at least um, Finn probably thinks she's somewhat crazy. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, Blair does too. Yeah. But, you know, you yeah. gotta, you gotta... I mean, all signs point to her having a lot of issues. Right? <laughs> to be entirely wow. clear. Wow, what? Athena. <laughs> I, she's in desperate need of therapy. She has a 10. That's all she needs. I mean, she never should have came on the mission. Say that. Getting her life back together. This girl's yeah. not gonna... Okay, but you say that, but she's not gonna trust another freaking therapist again. The last therapist she saw was Dr. Lark. That's traumatizing <laughs> in and of itself. If I do a human one, then I, what do you want from me? <laughs> some understanding and compassion for the plight mm. of a poor traumatized Russian lady, Ukrainian lady, she's not even Russian. Well, that uh that Russian spaceship that you encountered there is uh it's sus. Yeah, you know on usually in the scenarios they give you like all these little events that happen through the scenario. Well they give you campaign events that could happen throughout the campaign. And that's just mm. one of those campaign events. Like I didn't have to throw that in there. Normally you would just come to this planet and land and that's it, but I figured I'd I wanted to do some spacewalking in there, so I added that one in there uh to begin okay. with. So you actually know about the <laughs> and Seja knows about the proto hives already anyways, so mm. might as well just throw them in there right away you wanted to kick me in the teeth with my backstory session mm -hmm. one. yeah so you could explain to all it. the other party about that those creatures i mean she's still only done like the bare minimum of, a, of explaining like i'm pretty sure she's got like pictures and and shit to show you guys later which is gonna be great <laughs> for your insanity roll mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like <laughs> The, 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 there's the, the honey honey you got a big storm coming <laughs> there was some line when the storm started that was like reminiscent of that and that's all i could think for like the next that, 30 seconds that vine. yeah well yeah it was a interesting scenario anyways uh i don't yeah. even know what the other scenario is about i didn't even read them i just read this first one but 
It's mm -hmm. it, and it, you're going to find out uh, what's what these two uh, factions of people, uh, what what they're really about. You know why are they here? Uh, they they don't like each other. Uh, what's going on here? So there's a lot more. Uh, you you really don't have no idea what's going on here yet. So. And now they're trapped in an enclosed space yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, something and, tells me uh, we're gonna be that's gonna deal yeah. with some Yeah, trying to escape this thing is uh is kind of a neat little thing that he put in here. So yeah, it's gonna be fun seeing you guys try to escape this room with uh you got like probably like uh ten meters of water above you <laughs> and you gotta try and open this thing and it, it's gonna flood you or you're gonna drown or who's going first? Whoever's going last is gonna be in trouble. <laughs> and you got you got those guys that you got those guys that hate you down there. They hate each other, and they're, mm -hmm. who's gonna go first? <laughs> so I feel like I feel like they're gonna be arguing, and then one of like our rough dudes is just gonna like kick someone out of the way. It's like, God damn it, y'all shut the fuck up! I'll go first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely very curious to see, find out more about what what has happened on this planet to leave yeah. these yeah. bickering yeah. families. I I like. I still like yeah the the explanation honestly of like starvation makes a lot of sense but still like from tens of millions to eight in under a hundred <laughs> years is mm -hmm. buck wild evolution <laughs> just like evolutionarily and like in the general timeline of how ecology works yeah it, it's because they're all families like this every single one had a paired family that hated it <laughs> <laughs> and they so, killed the other. They, they Hatfield McCoy <laughs> themselves to, to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably you say that, but I bet that's gonna be it because that's like honestly the best explanation. If there's some weird ass shit on this planet, there's, it's probably like gonna be like they like got June they one. got uh, they they dug down, they hit fumes, they all went <laughs> fucking psycho. This is a yeah. professor was like, gas on now. the whole planet. <laughs> <laughs> there had to have been All some cannibalism like, going on. Yeah. I I want to see one of these beasts that they've been eating a chunk out of. That mm, thing's I mean... got to be angry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe it maybe it uh oh, no. maybe it's out of its cage. Yeah. No, 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 no. It could be lots of problems. No way that thing survived like it's a sandworm. It. It's ba it looks like a tardigrade. Tardigrades can survive the vacuum of space. Can they survive me stepping on them? Probably. Yeah. I assume so. Repeatedly. Yeah. yeah. With the force of a thousand suns. I mean, okay, maybe not then. <laughs> like I feel like you something can't step like with that. The force of a thousand suns. <laughs> That's what you think. So... That's what you think. Mm. You okay. don't know what secret powers I've developed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you would be Exposing the only one who would know the secret I was going to say, yeah, things are just so different now that we don't live in the same apartment for a no, year. We only live in the same road now from each other. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> we literally went from, oh, you're 10 seconds down the hall to 10 minutes down the road. Yeah, real upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> It's... Wait, are you guys role playing the people in the shelter? <laughs> <laughs> These are the factions. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. We used to be you roommates. Dungeon voice. They moved away. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> oh, gently. This is how you destroy a friendship. <laughs> I need somebody. Somebody to make a compilation of all the times y'all have made me wheeze laugh over the course of this. Sentence. It would be a lot. <laughs> I also want to know the count of like who. The apprentice scoreboards. Exactly. <laughs> I need there to be a, a leaderboard. A leaderboard of Epsilon making weird yeah. faces when disturbed or afraid. An Epsilon wheeze laughing counter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then also Athena pulling out some girl boss line that like <laughs> just just up here girl bossing it her way right into the sun. Oh yeah. No other way to do it. <laughs> like genuinely, I I wish I had like half the wit in that oh. moment. 
but I was too busy getting funny. kicked in the teeth with my backstory. So you like, know, sometimes yeah. that happens. I'm allowed a pass on this one, but <laughs> goddamn, Athena, I'm just like, oh. yes, pull that southern woman. Don't take no bullshit. I was gonna say it's the do no harm but take no shit mentality. It really Emily, is. Drop the bless yeah. your heart on, on, yeah. on this lady. Emily really likes you. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a problem there oh, in the future. Sure. I see that, but we'll... um, she can try to cause problems. Doesn't mean it's gonna work. Yeah, maybe y'all will just like end up together. Maybe this is just like yeah. her knowing how to say your her feelings. Uh, <laughs> <I'm flattered. laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Anyways, that was fun, everybody. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll wait till yeah, the next man. episode, another number two. Uh, All right. yeah. yeah. So stay tuned for the Walking Dead next week, and. Uh, yeah, see you next time for episode two. Uh, yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Have good a good night. Back. Adios. <laughs>